Let's see if we can see it. It looks like it is going on YouTube. Is the Twitches here yet? <laughs> Hi, everybody. All right. I see that I am live and I'm just making sure Tina is live. Let's see. Oh, cool. Okay, it looks like Dina's live too. Nice. All right. You just saw my face and zoomed. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Jules. If you don't know me, I am um, Dina's wifey. And Andrea Botez thinks she's Dina's wifey, but it's actually me. So now you know that. And I am currently in Barcelona at the moment. And that means I'm on the same time zone. So I can finally commentate some of her games, which we're really excited about. This is round one of the Reykjavik Open, and I have all the chats open. So, you know, that's the vibe. Hello! And if you might be like, um, why is Dina not here yet? This is a classic psych-out tactic. No, I'm just kidding. I think she's just, like, in the bathroom or something. <laughs> it's really good. It's really good. Thank you. Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you. It'll be, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Look, he's just like looking around all confused. I hate it too when my opponent doesn't show up on time, but it's like a classic Dina move. It's a classic Dina move. You know, get them, get them nervous, get them wondering, looking at the camera, just like all the way on top of them. It's just, it is what it is. We'll wait for her to get back though. I think she'll be here soon since the round started. So, oh, we have a Dina. Amazing. This is very exciting. Hello! Is everything working all well? Doesn't seem choppy. Audio is good. Video is good. Everything else good. I love how she's always in like chessboard themed clothing here. This is also great for me because I'm doing some OTB tournaments in the next couple weeks. So I need to get my brain back into OTB mode. So I'm very excited for this. I think there's nothing like analyzing a classical game to help with that. Do you guys have any tournaments that you're doing? I know it's tournament season for my Europeans. Maybe not for my Americans. I don't know. You'll have to let me know. Oh, also I have my soda. I'm going to get my soda. <laughs> chess outfit's very fitting. I agree. The chess outfit is very, very nice. Is there a link for the tournament? So if you go on the events page on chess.com, you'll see the Reykjavik Open. There's probably even a command, actually, that we have. I'll let the mods do that. Chess Dojo Live. Thank you. I think, um, I thought that was, Kostya was competing for a second, but I don't think Kostya is competing in this. Hello, Sino. You know, there are streamers all over the place. Yeah, I saw Anamaya earlier. If we flipped it the other way, I think you'd see Anamaya. But she was sitting also behind this desk. Usually we could see several streamers walk in and out. We should play a game. Whoever spots like a rogue streamer walking to the bathroom or something first gets a prize. I don't know what the prize will be, but we can come up with that. This is a really nice venue. Look at the water. This is in Iceland, Reykjavik, which is one of my favorite places in the world. I'm really jealous I don't get a go. I was planning on doing this tournament, but I couldn't. So very sad. It'll be so fun. Okay, I can't wait to see what happens with this game. We should also make a small bet of what the first move is going to be. Do we see e4, d4, c4, maybe even like the, the really sassy knight f3? <laughs> the body language with these two? <laughs> it's it's like the nerves. The first round of a tournament's always the hardest because your brain isn't quite in over the board mode, right? You really need to just like lock in. But, you know, it's not quite there yet. So, and you get really nervous. Like it's, you're kind of jittery that first round. She does always play the carrot. Well, not always. We'll see. Maybe I can put in the clock. I might be able to put in the clock. Let's see. No, that. Would it be here? No, okay. Maybe we can do the clock later if it gets really important. We're doing what we can. Someone supporting their friend in the chat. <laughs> Did she dress as the board? Yeah, she's cosplaying as the board. It's powerful. I wonder why he isn't moving yet. 
maybe they haven't started the games. Interesting. They're always late on the first rounds too, which is good. Let's go, Dina. Yeah, we have a Luke supporter in the chat, so we need some more Dina supporters. Also, this guy has the best last name ever. His last name's literally Honey. I've never heard that last name in my life. Okay, we see a handshake. We see a handshake. So by the way, the DGT board's gonna take a second to update because it's on delay. And we see E4 and a Karo. You can tell from this angle. <laughs> So whoever predicted the Karo was 100% right here. What's the time control? I think we have a command, but it was probably just a normal classical, like 90 minutes with the increment, but maybe someone knows. I'm eating my, sorry, I'm gonna be eating my tomatoes while we uh, <laughs> discuss it because classical games are quite long. The board is not refreshed. Yeah, the board's usually on a delay for uh, anti-cheating measures, which means that it usually takes up to like 10 to 15 minutes for the board to catch up, which means we can do two things here. I'm refreshing for y'all, but we can um, just look at the board on the uh, actual screen. And also I'll just keep trying to refresh, but I'm pretty sure that this board is gonna be on a delay. Yeah, it's on the delay. I don't know why it just changed colors on us, but I guess we have the green board for now. He's playing the two knights, Caro. Well, Dina's been playing the Caro for a very long time, so I don't think we're too worried about that, but it's actually kind of an interesting, interesting variation. At least we don't get an exchange. I'm always for the more interesting variations. So this is the first round, which means she's playing down a little bit. He's, I think, 1936. Rated. So not that far down, like he's still a very strong player, but sometimes we get some fun tricky lines at this level because no one wants to draw. Well, besides the lower rated player. <laughs> but we, we usually see some people taking risks, which is fun. Better colors? You don't like my purple board? I found that purple is the best color for the board, but it's fine. His last name's Honey. Yeah, she's not calling her opponent Honey. That's his actual name. If she plays bishop g4, he will play h3 and need to give up the bishop pair. Yeah, we can make some moves manually if we see it. Let me try to do that. I won't be lazy. I will make the moves. Right now, so since I'm currently in abroad, I don't have my... Um, I just have like one laptop, so I have to go through like 150 frames to find this. Okay, so you guys are going to help me with the moves. It's E4. I think we had a Karo. Did he go Knight F3 first? Can someone give me the moves? I broke the live board. I did not break the live board. Yeah, sometimes there's going to be delays at times. <laughs> My Wi-Fi is really good, thankfully, but we do have a billion programs running at once and we're streaming on three different platforms. Let's see. I think we had... I don't know if Ben's doing commentary for this tournament. I know Alessi is doing commentary and I think Ben might be doing a round, but... Not sure yet. Here, let's see. All right, I need you guys in chat to be helpful and tell me what the moves were. So, especially in her Twitch chat, was it Knight F3 next? Because I can't see on the board. He played h3 next? No way. Did he actually? I feel like you guys are messing with me. <laughs> okay, knight c3 you said. Okay, thank you. Knight c3. Then we have d5, normal caro, and then knight f3, right? Yep, knight f3. Cool. Bishop g4. I'm trusting y'all. 
H3. Interesting. Okay. Okay. And after that, do you see on the board what's happening? Once delay catches up, it will be fine, but we'll just manually make it. Knight E10. Thank you. She played a bishop takes F3. Okay. And he captured back with queen. Queen takes f3. All right. Are we up to task here? Are we up to date now? After queen takes f3? E64. Thank you. Y'all are being helpful. <laughs> now are we up to date? They're moving very quickly in this opening. Actually, I think this is good. I think we've got it, right? Oh, awesome. We're up to date. Amazing. Are they on a boat? No, so this is actually the Harpa Hall in, um, I need my soda, in Reykjavik. So this is a really famous concert hall and they use it to hold this tournament. So it's right on the water, super pretty. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't there a volcano going off there? Okay, yeah, that's actually a thing. <laughs> so, there's a lot of active volcanoes in Iceland right now, which won't harm any of the players. But if one goes off, um, there's a chance that airlines could be down for a little bit. So if they're very unlucky or lucky, I don't know, they might have to stay in Iceland for a few more days. But I don't think the chances of that happening are are that high. We won't see like an active volcano from the tournament hall. <laughs> yeah, it's the building right next to the water. Panda sponsored? <laughs> no, I wish. I do have like a, a bad soda habit I'm trying to kick. Okay, wait. So is the board still caught up? I can't zoom in here, so you guys have to help me out here. I think I need to add one move. All right, what's what's the move I'm missing? Knight f6? Cool. Okay. Thank you for helping me out. I think this is the first time a chat has been helpful. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I am going to eat my tomato, though. That's okay. So someone put in one of the chats the actual name of the volcano. I cannot pronounce that for the life of me. So the volcano that might erupt is Ashyafala Yokel. <laughs> I feel like I'm being trolled there. This is classical time to control. I think we have a command. Pretty sure Luke Honey invented chess in his spare time. <laughs> These chats are killing me right now. Have a nice supper. I, I was chewing, I was chewing. Okay, so Luke Honey has a few options. I wouldn't be surprised if he's out of book here since he's taking a little time to think and it's kind of a weird position. This is not like the typical Caro that we see, but we have a few options. We have Bishop D3. Pretty standard. I'm going to ignore whatever the engine says because I don't think that the engine's very useful in these kinds of scenarios. It feels like the queen's kind of misplaced at the moment. Like, it feels like the queen isn't really doing much. Here, we might have, I don't know, bishop g5 seems like a pretty logical move. 
Unless there's any sort of sack, but I don't see it here at the moment. This looks like a pretty decent fun position for both players, though. Like, I think we're going to get an interesting caro out of this. 90 minutes plus 30 seconds per move, extra 30 minutes after 40 moves. Okay, yeah, that's super standard. Nice time control. Main move is bishop d3. Still in book. We'll see, we'll see. bd3 makes sense, though. You're adding extra defenses to the pawn. Hello, Lion, what is up? What is up? What is up? How are y'all doing today? I'm still going to drink my soda. She always looks like mildly annoyed at the board, which I really enjoy. I think it adds like imagine if you were playing her and she's just like glaring you down across the board. Like I, I like it. I like the intimidation factor. What's on E5? <laughs> the chat's killing me. I, I don't think, actually, you know what? I don't know if there are any rules against drinking during a tournament, but I would not recommend it. I think classical is already difficult. Luke's prepared for a stare down. <laughs> he's still thinking, he's still thinking, which makes me think he's out of book here. But maybe it's also a tactic. Like I've prepped for opponents before. And when I prep, the person who's prepping me will be like, okay, just on move five, look around, look lost for like three minutes, four minutes, pretend you don't know what you're doing so they don't freak out and like do a weird sideline. Um, I, I don't have the patience for that. Like I always think it's been three minutes and I'll end up moving after a minute. But you know, maybe maybe he's playing the game. Maybe he's playing it well, taking a good amount of time. Maybe. This is like a very, very caro pawn structure. Dina's very good in these closed structures too. She's she's very strong in these closed structures. I'm talking to all the chats. I actually have three chats going right now. We're triple tasking at the moment. <laughs> so we have a bunch of chats up. I promise you I'm not just talking to myself. I guess this is kind of talking to myself, but I have the house to myself right now, which is very nice because it means no one's going to hear me talking to myself and be alarmed. We're big fans of the Caro Pond structure here. I like to get up and walk around too during tournaments. I feel like it's really refreshing and it's just nice to see other games and you don't get anxious. I don't know. This would actually be a good uh, game for Dina to win if she can, because she's black here, so it means against a higher rated opponent next round she'd get white. I think this is a good, this is a good pairing. And it will definitely be an interesting game with whatever Caro we're seeing here. Does anyone know the line of this Caro? Also, good call to anyone who said um, just make an analysis board because it is not updating. I think they're on a pretty heavy delay. He's suddenly worried about sacking his d-pawn, but it's a bit late to think about it. After bishop d3, she'll play d takes e4, followed by queen takes d4. It's still not a sack. It's just, like, a trade. <laughs> I And I don't think we... I don't think that that's his express worry when playing this kind of position, because you know... You know that, like, that pawn's gonna fall. And he probably doesn't actually want to keep the, the position super closed. Because when you're playing a higher rated opponent, usually they do better in these close positions than their lower rated opponent. It's the open positions that are full of tactics where things can go wrong under time pressure. Hello, 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 Gwimore Spell, what is up? Now nah, Luke's underrated. Is this personal information? Okay, everybody's underrated nowadays. <laughs> Although the Fide boost did help. The Fide boost did help, but, you know, what can you say? Is checkers for people who are less smart than people playing chess? I think checkers and chess are two completely different games and you can't really compare them. I think checkers are for people who don't really want to play chess? Is that even true? Checkers is just like a different game. It's like saying how is Monopoly different from chess? You can't. It's odd to me now that he's thinking. I mean, he just might be out of book here. 
Do not slander checkers. Are we are we checkers fans here? We're not checkers fans. Reed says no. HBV bat, thank you for subbing to my channel. I appreciate you there. 15 months, you rock. I just want to make sure I didn't miss any others. I think I have everything up. <laughs> okay, let's see. 2400, of course, he's underrated. I think he is not 2400, if that's what you're saying. The same Luke that killed the Empire. <laughs> I actually, okay, fun fact. I get the reference. I've never watched Star Wars. Like, I've seen clips. I've seen enough where I can get away with, like, pretending like I've watched Star Wars, but I've actually never watched Star Wars. Like, none of the movies. I haven't watched the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one. We have a move, Bishop D3, which, according to chat, is theory. So maybe he's still in theory, or maybe it's just a sensical move. So we're looking at D takes E4, probably Knight takes E4. Or maybe, yeah, D takes E4 and Knight takes E4. Queen takes D4. That's kind of an interesting line. She's up a pawn, but it feels like there's a little bit of compensation there. I'm kind of curious. If knight takes... Are you just good with the queen trade? That's kind of an interesting position. We can actually put that on the board since I think we have time. Kind of want to make it a variation though. So let's say let's say we take here, right? Then we get like maybe knight takes c4. You could also look at bishop takes, but I don't know, knight takes seems more threatening. Queen takes d4. So whoever said it's a pawn stack, you're totally right. Might be. All right, so. I'm just kind of curious why this is not great. You go here, queen takes f6. Because you're up a pawn, so this just looks good for black. Okay, makes sense. Even though the pawn structure is a little bit destroyed and you don't have your bishop pair, it's still good. Might be a little boring though. Okay, so what what would you do here, guys, as white in this position? Yeah, action. Thank you. We're doing good. You could try to kick the queen with c three. Then you also have as room for your bishop to maneuver. I'm pretty sure Dina's still in theory here. <laughs> Although it does seem it does seem like a very interesting position at the moment. This is not the actual live position. Hey Sente, what's up? Alright, we'll go back to the actual live position here. Someone on YouTube says, I'm 1240 ELO. The only advice I can give you is with blunders. <laughs> Honestly, you don't have to be 1240 to, to blunder. Trust me. I, I lost a, um, in one of my last classical games, I lost a pawn playing the Rosalimo on like move five. Like I was just down a pawn, zero compensation. It was one of the center pawns, which is the whole reason you play the Rosalimo too. So it was just not good. <laughs> the GM Crambling is playing, went for the cow opening against her. That's exciting that she's playing a GM. Anna was at my last tournament in uh, Sweden. 
she played very well. I think she she might have won the tournament or got second. Been there, yeah. Everybody blunders a pawn on like move three, or gets <laughs> dead lost out of the opening at some point. At some point. Would be in Dina's interest to keep the game more closed due to the bishop knight trade. That's an interesting comment. You know, honestly, I think it's too early to really see. Strategically, I think I would keep the the game closed just because she's probably stronger in closed positions than he is. Braiding wise, I mean, no saying what his strength level is, but generally that's the accepted kind of ideas there. Although this position looks like it's going to be open and tactical really no matter what you do. Has Luke gone to find Dina? <laughs> you know, we, we don't ask questions here. <laughs> it's been a while. Did you improve? Maybe got more rating? Yeah, I'm technically higher rated. I don't know if I've improved much, but I've been taking lessons and doing a lot of tactics, doing a lot of analysis, and I'll be doing two over the board tournaments, once in like a little more than a week, I'll be streaming it. And then I'm doing Formentera as well. Oh yeah, and she has two coffees. Do you think one's for Luke or are they both for her? Or is one water? What? Or maybe she couldn't get a large enough coffee so she ordered two of them. That's actually very funny. <laughs> Hikaru has blundered and lost to a 1200 once on stream. I think everybody's lost to a 1200 on stream. Both gone world championship match. One's coffee. <laughs> I'm not gonna read that other comment. Yeah, it's just a pain to put the clock on the board. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep the clock off of the board until we absolutely have to have it on the board, like with or under tag pressure. But the game's just started, so I don't think we're really going to have much of a problem there. Yeah, it's going to be a very long game. <laughs> well, hopefully, unless something goes wrong. Someone says they think black is completely lost. Yeah, that is just not the case. <laughs> it's only like move 10. I thought the same, but what are the odds that Jules doesn't stream for another month? Okay, that's physically impossible because I'm covering more of Dina's games in Reykjavik. So, ha, huh, take that. And also I will be streaming my tournament games. So, hopefully if all goes well. Everyone's so skeptical. I like the chessboard shirt. I'm a big fan of her chessboard shirt too. In fact, I wish I had more chess related clothing. Although my sister already makes fun of me. My sister already thinks I'm too obsessed with chess. So I think if I walked around in like chessboard themed clothing, I'd get made fun of. Yeah, fair enough. Her table was exactly where it was last year when she played her immortal game. That is so true. Okay, for you guys who don't know, Dina was, um, did very, very well in Reykjavik last year. So she has a lot to live up to. I think she beat two GMs in Reykjavik. Is that true? But she played some beautiful games and she absolutely like destroyed a bunch of opponents. I'm watching four games at the same time. Yeah, so many people are streaming. I'm guessing the games you're watching are the Botezas, both of them, and then Anna's and Dina's. Everyone's playing in Reykjavik this year. Now we have both of people at the board. What are the chances? Yeah, someone just commented on that. <laughs> Thank you for following my channel, Krusty Knuckles, great username. I love all the emotes I'm seeing here. I don't know why my board turned from purple to green. Someone insulted my purple board and then it turned to green, so I guess you got your wish here. Return of the Jedi, exactly. If you're trying to avoid being mocked by a sibling, you'll be stuck in Zungzwang forever. That is very true. My sister's been making fun of me since I was very little. 
This is a rite of passage. She's also much taller than me. My sister is about four inches taller than me. Um, she's cooler than me. My sister is an archery instructor. Like she has her archery certification to instruct. She's doing her bio masters and she's a black belt in karate. No, Taekwondo, sorry. Um, so yeah, she's much cooler than me and kind of scary. So when we were little and we used to get into fights, she would just like floor me. Like I would say something and she'd just like knock me to the floor <laughs> and then I'd never say it again. It's good. I think that teaches discipline, you know? I am still in Spain, but we finally got my ethernet working because I'm running like 24 programs and my computer's not pooping out. So that is fantastic. Tina is a WGM. I do not have a chess title. I am like mid 1700 feet a here. We're going for WCM, but I have to hit 2000 for that, which I think will take a lot more tournaments and a lot more losses and hopefully a lot more analysis. I think they're both out of book now, yeah? Thank you for whoever put the rating in one of the chats. I appreciate that. Yes, Dina is the 2164. So how Swiss tournaments work is the first round, you pair someone who's higher rated against someone significantly lower rated, usually by 300 to 400 FIDE rating points. And the idea is that they'll beat them and then you'll be paired with someone who's maybe a little bit lower rated than you if you're on the higher end like Dina is. And then you beat them and you get paired with someone who's your exact rating, so on and so forth. And if there's upsets, then it kind of gets turned around. Like for example, let's say a 1600 FIDE is playing a game against a 2000 and they lose, they'll get paired against maybe an 1800 if they lose again, then some of their rating. So usually by round three, you play someone who you're about evenly matched with. But upsets happen all the time, especially nowadays. Hello, everybody. What is up? What is up? What is up? Someone says in my chat, guys, Dina scares me to death. Need to share. <laughs> it's the face. It's a stare, you know? She's got that, like, that very scary chess player stare. I'm a big fan. I love my wife. I really do. I really like the positioning of both players here. The location looks amazing. Yes, that's one thing. I think Europe does chess tournaments better. I will say I haven't been to tournaments on any other continent besides Europe and North America. So I don't know how they are in different areas, but European tournaments is so much better than North American tournaments. Like you get tea, people are nice to you. They don't yell at you. Usually it's one round of day. Although some of these are two rounds a day because I guess people realized it's really expensive to stay in a hotel for 10 days. A lot of people can't take 10 days off. So now they're doing two rounds a day in European tournaments, which is super unfortunate. But, you know, it happens. Did we get a move, by the way? Bishop e7. All right, I'll quit my yapping and uh, put the move on the board. Bishop e7. All right, so definitely out of theory. Let's see. I'm wondering why she didn't choose to go for d takes e4. Maybe she didn't want the end game, even though it's better for her. Or maybe she has another idea planned. It's still pretty early to tell. All right. We're probably going to see some normal development here. I don't think we'll see e5 because I feel like that closes off the board and gives Dina a little bit of leverage of where she wants to move her pieces. Although I guess we could see e5 here. Because it is a little closed. There aren't great places to reroute the knight, but the knight can definitely reroute. And I think that's a position Dean is super comfortable with, so I think she's hoping to see that. Your yapping is fine. I enjoy the stories. Thank you. And thank you for the follows, guys. I appreciate that. Yeah, I like the yapping too. You see, I don't get a yap enough here because I am very bad at Spanish. I'm taking lessons, but my Spanish is very, very bad. Like, all I can say is, like, yo tengo una bolsa. Um, hola. Como estas? Muy bien. Uh, about that. <laughs> and I've been here for a ridiculous amount of time. I've been here for over three months. And my Spanish is so bad. I, I just don't know. I just get so nervous to talk to people here. And everyone speaks English because I'm in Barcelona. So... 
I don't get a yap very much anymore. Because <laughs> all of my interactions with people here are like, hi, can I have a bag? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, 10 days off for work in the US is really difficult. Also, hotels are really expensive. It's just tough to dedicate that amount of time. Although I know for professional chess players, one game a day is really the only option because you have to prep for your rounds. And prepping for two games a day is just exhausting. Donde esta la biblioteca? I know that one. Where's the library? Yo, I'm so good at Spanish. Perks to me. Amazing. Okay, I think we missed a few moves. I can't see it, so you guys will have to help me out a little bit. Does anyone see the moves? Talking to yourself is okay. Talking and replying to yourself is not. We have multiple chats going, okay? We're up to date. Bishop e7 was the last move. Dina's staring into my soul, true. All the moves are in. Okay. Okay, just making sure. Just making sure. Living in a resort town has its price. Yeah, I can imagine it's really nice, but probably pretty expensive. <laughs> Five to seven weeks here plus holidays all paid. Really? Where are you from if you don't mind me asking? That's crazy. I can't imagine that. Thank you, Minnie. I appreciate it. Sunday says I have some work meetings today, so I'll keep appearing and disappearing. I appreciate you. You're awesome. When I was in Montreal, every time I tried to speak French, they replied in English. So, I love the French. I really do. Big fan of the French. I'm near France. Been to France. They do have a habit of being really mean to people who try to speak their language not fluently. Or with an accent. <laughs> I, I think it'd be even, like, here at least if I try in Spanish, I feel like maybe people are annoyed, but they don't show it. If you try in, in France and your French isn't good, We're on the analysis board right now, so I don't think I have the clock, but if we get into time pressure, I will try to put the clock up. But it just started, so we have plenty of time. You get unlimited paid time off at your job. What happens if you just take forever off? Someone asked, how do I know Dina? I haven't seen you here before. <gasps> Tragic. <laughs> For you guys who know, Dina is my wife. She's one of probably the nicest people I've ever met. She looks really scary. And I'm going to continue to say she's scary so she keeps that rep in the chat because I know she likes it. But she's actually a very sweet person. I have a lot of Dina stories. But when I first started streaming and first started on Instagram, like I didn't have any followers anywhere, basically. Um, Dina became friends with me. She took me out when we were in LA, bought me sushi, gave me life advice, gave me love advice, told me to never date chess players, which I didn't listen to, but was good advice. And just was like an overall great friend. And she's just awesome. I don't know. So we've been friends ever since. It's very cute. Dina likes having the initiative. That's why she did climb the pond, even though it was best. Yeah, you know, I think being a complicated position will, will benefit her. I think there was a move, yeah? Bishop e3, yep, yeah, makes sense. Thank you. YouTube chat. So there's kind of an interesting line here actually that we should show, knight takes e4, knight takes e4. D takes e4, queen takes e4. 
97. I don't, that just feels like it simplifies it a little bit. I don't know. You could also just leave it closed in castle. I If I know Dina well, which I think I do, I'm just going to bet that she leaves it closed in castles. I feel like that's more of the Dina move to make in this kind of position. Did she move? New move played knight a6? What? Knight a6, okay. All right, I see. I'm wondering where the reroute is coming here. I think maybe we want to play knight to b4. I am a little bit worried about if this knight ends up getting shut out. Let's say the knight's forced to move back here after e5. There's a lot of pieces aimed towards this king side, although Dina is uncastled, so I feel like she's more safe than if she were castled. I'm not super worried about her position here. I'm not super worried. I think it'll be interesting. It's like that with those people. She seems like a really nice person, IRL. So what my dad used to say, very wise man, is people on <laughs> the East Coast, so this is an American thing, people on the East Coast are mean to your face and nice behind your back. People on the West Coast are nice to your face and mean behind your back. Sometimes I feel like that applies with just people in general. Sometimes the people with the hardest exteriors are the nicest. Don't tell her I said that though, okay? He got up and she smiled. Is this Australia? This is Reykjavik. Iceland. Which actually, okay, you would think Iceland would be the place that's really cold and Greenland would be the place that has like a bunch of like really nice nature, but it's the opposite. I think they did it to fool people. Iceland is the place that's really green, and Greenland's the place that has a lot of ice. This is a Swiss format tournament, so you play down in rating or up in rating the first round, and then it gets more even as you go on. I think it's 10 rounds. Would you ever do chess boxing? I've actually taken a chess boxing lesson once. I think I would do chess boxing. Not sure how good I would be at it, though I do go to the gym, so I would like to think I'd be okay. First time I saw Jules doing a commentary, I was helping Yuri or Hunter, was that how we met? Yeah, so I did commentary before I met Dina in person. So this was back in, gosh, October over a year ago. So a year and like six months ago, something like that. Yeah, that was a long time ago. It was also for a uh, <laughs> Serbian league tournament, which meant I had to wake up at 4.30 a.m. or 5 a.m. to do her games. Worth it worth it. Why on earth is chess boxing a thing? That is a great question. That's so true. I'm from Philly now and I live in California. My whole family's from Philly. I never lived there, but my dad lived there growing up, my grandma. I'm a huge fan of Philly. I played um, World Open, which was in Philly. So, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> I'm glad you agree with my dad. He's actually from Philadelphia, so maybe that's why you guys agree. I don't know. Dina's opponent's ELO is 1936, I believe. Reykjavik is where Spassky and Fisher played in 1972. Oh, don't get me started. Okay. For you guys who don't know me, by the way, hello, I'm Jules. I am a huge chess history nerd. Like, I've listened to every single chess documentary, every single chess book that exists, like on history, not on the actual chess. Um, I'd be better at chess if I'd done that. So I love chess history. I can tell you all about Fischer Spassky, all about that championship, all about everything that happened. You know that they actually checked for like bugs in the walls. Like there, it was a huge thing. So anytime you want like fun facts, I might sprinkle them in. Let's see. <laughs> we don't care, Jules. We just love your energy. Thank you for sprinkling. That's like a compliment sandwich, right? When uh, you have to say something mean to someone, so you're like, 
like lion, you know, your hair doesn't look nice today. You should fix it. But I really like your eyes. It's like a compliment sandwich. Or I think you're supposed to say like something. No, you're supposed to say something nice, then something mean, then something nice again. So like, lion, I really like your eyes, but your hair doesn't look good today. But your sweater looks great. Dina got paired down today, so she's playing down a little bit. Although these 1900s are dangerous. Anything about Fisher going crazy? I think Fisher always had the tendencies that he had. Um, I wouldn't even say, like he always was very isolationist. He always was very intense and competitive. It just kind of manifested itself more as he got older. What's my thoughts on Queen's Gambit YouTube? I love that show. I love it, big fan. A3, I see. Now that's a move. I feel like this pawn structure is begging to be broken, but at the same time, I think she's gonna wanna keep this close pawn structure. That's interesting. So now the move a3 was played, right? Because he's anticipating knight b4, which can't be done at the moment. But I think we're also going to see a pawn break. I don't think it's right to pawn break right now. I think it's too early to pawn break. But I think we will see a pawn break eventually. Also, I don't think we're going to see this kind of trade because we get this open file. It's an interesting position though. Again, I think she's a little nervous about opening up this or castling actually because of all these pieces just absolutely pointed towards the king. Also, white's king hasn't castled, so white's king can technically castle queen side. There is a lot to think about here. Knight c7, yes, okay, great. We have knight c7 on the board. We're doing a reroute here. I like this move. I like the reroute. I think there's a lot of places she can put this knight. It allows for some sort of, I don't know, b5 shenanigans eventually. We have more freedom on the queen side. And neither player is castling though. Neither player is castling. Yeah, Dina, Anna, and the Botez sisters are all playing in Reykjavik right now. The engine is nervous too. Look, I don't listen to engines, especially in these kinds of openings. They don't know what they're talking about. The only time I'll start listening to engine is if it's like plus 1.5 or something, then I think it's worth looking. But when you're looking at like plus 0.9, something like that, if you turn on depth, it could change. One of my favorite chess history facts is when an amateur pointed out how Alakine didn't play book moves during a game. He answered, I am book. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Two wives, Dina has game. I know. I know she has another wife. I, I do know that. I like to think that I'm like her favorite. But I don't know. Her other wife is kind of cool. Yeah, the Botes are playing this game as well. Yeah, Anamaya is also playing. There's so many people playing Reykjavik. A bunch of GMs too. <laughs> yes, Tina, Tina has a lot of lovers here. Me, Andrea. Yeah, it's okay. We're all fighting for her affection because she is very cool. Look, all right, I like to think I'm the favorite. I like to think I'm the favorite, but we'll ask her after the game. Anna Cramley is playing a GM, a strong GM too, 25-55. Yeah, so she's playing up her first round. That's actually a really fun pairing. It's kind of interesting. So the engine, what the engine's worried about, although my depth is really, really low on the engine, I'm gonna actually see if I can put my depth up a little higher. Yeah, engine's still worried about e5. 
97. I think the idea is that like black is a little bit cramped here and there isn't really a good way to break. Although I feel like the c5 break comes kind of quickly. If I were him, I'd be a little bit worried about the c5 break. Although, yeah, I think the idea of queen g3 is a little bit bothersome because if you castle, then you're looking at kind of like bishop h6, a lot of different different shenanigans. You have four streams open. A bunch of people do. <laughs> the opponent's like mid-1900s. You guys are in charge of telling me when a new move happens. We're making it manually on the board. 1939, thank you. Y'all are on it. Yeah, so many people are playing this tournament right now. Do we have a move on the board? Did you guys see it? You have better eyes than I do. I'm like 99% sure we had a move on the board. What is it, y'all? Be helpful, please. I love Frank Brady Endgame. That's a book about Fisher. It's one of my favorite books. I actually listened to the whole audiobook on a chess, on a road trip, not a chess trip. He castled. Okay. Yeah, I think it's. When you're playing up, it's kind of hard to make these definitive moves like e5. I'm not even sure. e5 does seem a little vulnerable to something like knight moves back, c c5 break, but we've got a castle on the board. Castle on the board. So the engine keeps screaming for this pawn to be taken. I don't think we're going to see it. I don't even know. Because if we don't see the threat of e5, which also... Hmm. I mean, let's look at this a little deeper. e5... Knight moves back. Let's say e5 when it's his move. Saying she does something kind of small. I don't know. Maybe it's just that it's a bit cramped. And I guess f4 eventually can come in to protect this pawn. So it's not like a isolated pawn or anything. Hmm. Maybe it's just because it's a cramped position and a little bit uncomfortable. Rook e1. a6, then rook e1. a6. Which rook? Is it rook f? Okay, thank you. Rook F E one got it. This is kind of a tough position, actually, practically, because here I would be a little nervous to castle. Because if you castle right, you have all these all these pieces are just very well placed. Ah, my bad. If this deleted my analysis, I'm going to cry. But I don't think it will. I think it just deleted the last couple moves because it's up to date. Ooh, I switched it back to my purple board. Very exciting. All right. Here, we're done. Bishop e3. Let's see how my memory goes. All right. I think we had knight a6 here. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, knight a6. Then we had this. I think we had knight moves back here. Castle. A6. F E1. I think that's where we're at, correct? Look, that memory. <laughs> We've been studying. Dina has the sun in her eyes. 
I don't think the sun's setting that early. Wait, actually, it could be, guys. Fun fact about Iceland is the sun sets early in winter, and it's spring. Technically, it's almost spring, but it's still on the wintry side of spring, meaning that the sun's probably setting pretty early there. Yeah, so I stream on Twitch. Um, a lot of the stuff I do is on Instagram, Jules Gambit on Instagram. And yeah, then I do chess. <laughs> Just me think of D takes E4 and also getting the knight to D5. Why else the knight maneuver? Yeah, I mean, usually when we let this go for a while, the only thing about D takes is it does kind of simplify white's position a little bit. Ooh, we have moves. We have moves. What are the moves? What are the moves? I'm waiting, chat. Be good. <laughs> Night B4. Um, I am 1730-something Fide. Night B5. All right, we have Night B5. Okay, and then do we have any other moves? Nope, not yet. Sunset should be 7.30 in Reykjavik. Okay, maybe it's on the spring side of spring. <laughs> I remember when I was in Reykjavik last time. Not for chess. I was there, I think, in April, May. May, probably. And it was sunny till 3 a.m., which was actually kind of cool. Except when you need to sleep, it wasn't cool because your circadian rhythm gets all off. But other than that, it was kind of cool. Also, Reykjavik is an hour behind where I am right now. Are both the Botez's games over? right now. Tina's opponent's rating is 1930-something. Hello, hello, hello. What is up? It's cool during the winter when it's always dark. Oh, it's not cool during the winter when it's always dark. Yeah, I can imagine how sad that would get, even when it rains too much. Though, no, the opening is a caro. We got a two nights caro here. You thought I was French? Do you have a French accent? <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping the sun won't set too quick for me because right now the sun is my only source of lighting. But I'll turn on the lights. It will start to get a little dark over here, but I think it should be fine for a bit. It's just incentive for her to beat him quickly, yeah? Let's see. I like Dina's purse today, too. I like all of Dina's outfits. They always look very snazzy. When's the last time you guys competed in a tournament? chat that's not like judgmental question it's not like when's the last time you competed in a tournament it's like when's the last time you competed in a tournament you know like a like a light light little thing i i used to have a lot of trouble with phrasing when i was young everything i said sounded super judgmental it's okay i sent for dina too about 20 years ago over the board really last week okay There's less EDM here, whether that's a positive or a negative. All right, I am going to eat another tomato. So there'll be like five seconds of awkward silence. You'll just have to deal with it. Keep writing in chat, it will help.
I have a, another tournament in Spain that's closer, cheaper for me, um, in like a week or two. I never compete in actually tournaments, but in high school we had tournaments I used to compete. Fair enough. Let's say B3 as the first move that you're, you've started playing. Last tourney was the 2000 European Kids Championship. Wild. Did I get it? Would you rather play, a chatter asks, would you rather play a tournament with all low ratings or all high ratings? All high ratings. Okay, guys, if you want to play a tournament, I strongly recommend you play up. Bardan, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. So I actually got it right. It was B3. That is really kind. I appreciate it. Thank you for gifting 10 subs on my channel. It's very sweet. I appreciate it. Yeah, they usually have fixed boards. How's B3 treating you? I actually had a kid play B3 against me in my last tournament. I won. It's one of the only games I won, <laughs> but I did win against B3. But I also, I've heard good things about B3. The owner of Chessable plays it, swears by it. He's an international master. So I, I know it's solid. You just have to know the positions pretty well. Yeah, I don't blame you for not wanting to play the London. <laughs> he said one of his favorite things about B3 is your opponent just looks very mad. So it sounds like it's working. Andrea's winning, Alex is losing. First rounds are tough. Yeah, so at tournaments, sometimes if you're very nice and if you're very lucky, they'll give you a special set board so you don't have to move around as a streamer because it's tough to set everything up, get everything to work all the time. Did we get a move? No, not yet. Yeah, I'm not sure what B3 transposes to, but I feel you would have to be a little worried about it transposing to something. Do you think chess players should avoid dating chess other chess players? Or is it ideal for two players to get together? Is a Twitch comment. Um, I strongly think chess players should avoid dating other chess players. You need someone to balance you out. You can't have two people with the personality of chess players in a relationship. Like, it's great to share your hobbies and everything, but you need you need that balance, you know? That's my opinion. He has to be thinking of E takes D5. Yeah, you always have to be considering the breaks. It's kind of interesting. Let's take a look. E takes D5 knight takes right knight takes more makes more sense to me than pawn takes then you've got knight takes you could choose to open up here but since you don't really want this line i think it'd be better to open up here but that's interesting because then you lose a pawn do you that's but you might have compensation like let's say we take back with the c pawn then maybe knight takes hmm It's kind of an interesting line. Let's let's actually look at that. E takes. Knight takes. Oh, you don't lose a pawn. You don't lose a pawn at all. You're fine. Here, then C takes and you're fine. You could double their pawns, which I think is probably what's being considered, but I don't think that's worth it, giving up the bishop pair. Especially rook can go to C2. You have an extra pawn. Dina has an extra pawn. Or does she? No, she doesn't. Not anymore. Still, I don't think it's worth it to double up those pawns, but it's definitely an interesting move to consider. All right, let's go back to where we actually are. Here. <laughs> it's a cool structure, though. Okay. 
Recall the Seinfeld episode. This is a chatter. When he found a female who was exactly like him, he was in love until he got tired of her cracking jokes exactly like him all the time. Exactly. You're like, oh my god, I've met someone and they're super like me. That's great. And then you realize there's a reason you can't stand yourself. Jokes. Jokes. But yeah, I think you do need a little balance. You need someone who challenges you, teaches you things, whatever. Sometimes it works out. Okay, so a chatter said like P and Juan, sometimes it works out. I think at the elite levels it's different because I think when you're traveling all the time for chess, you kind of want someone, it's like actors, right? You want someone who understands your lifestyle and what you're doing. Otherwise you'll probably have someone at home being a little jealous, like, honey, why are you going to Reykjavik again? You need to like take care of the child or do the groceries or whatever. Like it's helpful then to have two high rated players because you can travel you can kind of like understand what they're going through. So that would be the exception. But I think for most people, the large majority of people not like top 100 players. It's better to avoid that. There we go. Yeah, exactly. Chess players need a partner to drag them outside sometimes. Imagine you'd be like stuck in the house, like going over tactics with your partner like 24 seven. You wouldn't see the, the ground in years. Terrifying. Do people even go to the mall anyway? I feel like, okay, someone said playing chess as an activity is better than going to the mall. I don't think those are the only two options, chess or mall. I think there are other options, yeah? My parents do not play chess, no. I've taught my mom, and my mom likes it enough, but she doesn't really play. My dad knows the rules, but he doesn't play either. Good. Have you ever played Go the board game? I have not. I have not played Go. I've heard really good things about Go too. It's a lot like chess in that it's very, very complex. Although I'm already struggling with chess. I don't know how I feel about adding on another one. So someone who doesn't play chess shouldn't go out with someone who doesn't play chess also. No, that is not my logic, okay? I took a philosophy class. You can't do that. It's not A plus because A plus B equals C does not mean like well, you know what I mean, okay? <laughs> Don't LSAT me, all right? No, just because two chess players shouldn't date doesn't mean that two non-chess players shouldn't date, okay? I think it's fine for two non-chess players to date because it's not like the only two categories in the world are chess players and non-chess players. E5 is played. Okay, we have E5 on the board. So I think there's really only one move for Dina here which is knight d7. So I'm fairly sure we're gonna see that pretty quickly. We all know why your mom wanted to learn a bit of chess. Yeah, my mom has a crush on Yasser from uh, St. Louis. St. Louis Chess Club, I think he's doing a lot of commentating now. Probably commentating the American Cup tournament now. Um, I don't blame her, Yasser is pretty cool. But she actually didn't really learn chess. She just watched a bunch of Yasser streams and kind of like picked it up, you know? Me and Dina, we are the exceptions to the rule, okay? We're the exceptions. A chess player can date a checkers player. I would, I would have to say that. All right, I'm betting we have knight d7, yeah? Like, I, I would be willing to bet on that, but I'm not exactly sure, so someone has to say, because I can't see. Or did she not move yet? 
Maybe she didn't move yet. Pretty sure we have 97, yeah? Okay, thank you. <laughs> 97, oh, and he played instantly. He played instantly, okay. Wow, we have a bunch of moves. I'm gonna need y'all for this. Knight d7, then knight takes b5. Really? That's super interesting. Knight takes b5. All right, what do we have after that, chat? Or are we up? I think we're up to date. Crazy, we had a bunch of moves all at once. All right. Dina is wearing a chessboard. It's an intimidation tactic. Are you intimidated? Which pawn? A pawn. That makes sense, keeping the clump. Look at this clump of pawns. Very clumpy. Also, we don't have any sort of break here. We don't have any sort of c4 break. Although the only thing I'd be a little worried about here... Okay, there are a couple interesting options. We could try to get our... Oh my gosh, I did it again. I need to stop doing that. I jinxed myself. Let's see if I can remember my moves. Okay, so this was the last spot in AP5. Here we had E5, correct? I believe we had E5 here. Here, takes, takes, keeping it clumped. I think that's the last move, correct? Always take towards the center. <laughs> And I think we're up to date now. But let me know if we aren't. Let me know if we aren't. Hello, Paul, what is up? How are you doing? Welcome back. This is my first time streaming in like a month. <laughs> I'm excited to be back. Queen G4 play, yeah? Yeah, queen g4 is annoying. Queen g4, queen g3. Lots of similar things. The basic idea is you're forcing some sort of g6 move. I guess you could also choose not to castle, but something like king f8 seems really, really scary. <laughs> seems really scary. You can't castle right now because then you walk right into bishop h6. There's a mate threat. It just does not look good. There's no way to defend. You lose a rook. So I think we're going to have to see g6 if she wants to preserve castling. Although g6 isn't the end of the world, but g6, I'd be a little afraid of running into bishop h6, which is kind of annoying. Thank you for subbing, Vartink. Thank you. Yeah, you're castling right into the bishop pair. It's a little scary. I'd be wondering about... Oh, did, did she move? Do we have a move? She played g6. Cool. Predictions. All right. If bishop h6, bishop f8, the knight could take back. Yeah, if she takes. So that's fine. This, this does look a little sketchy, but I think if we can castle, get your rook to e1, bring your bishop in to protect, then we get kind of this fianchetto structure. Maybe we can even go for an f5 break eventually. It's not that bad. It's going to be kind of tough here. I actually would be very annoyed at the move bishop h6, even though it's objectively not the best move in this position. It is kind of hard to keep the attack going for white, though. What would you guys do as white here? It might just be simpler just to, I don't know, start on the queen side. Someone from chat says, I feel like 99.5% of chess players are hobby players anyway. How are, how many are actually good at it and make a living off of it? 
that's two different questions. There's a lot of players who are good at chess and don't make a living off of it. I'd say maybe you can be a content creator, you can be a teacher and probably make a living, but people who make a living directly from playing tournaments, probably top 100, top 50 players in the world, if that. I know, Dina's sweater is really cool. I agree. Top 30, actually. Interesting. Dina hates Drossar turned down a perpetual against a 2600. That's wild. <laughs> I've missed perpetuals before, but I that's that is wild. The opponent is 1936. This was a Caro, correct? You would force for a queenside castle and then attack with pawns. I think a queenside castle would be for white. Like, I think the kingside castle is the better move. Queenside castle, you're gonna run into a bunch of pawn sacks, open files. I, I don't really think he needs to be that aggressive here. I think he just needs to continue to improve positionally. Yeah, she does like wearing her checkerboard patterns. <laughs> I'm gonna continue to eat my, my tomato so there'll be a little bit more silence. I'm not a vegetarian. I just am a very bad cook. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. But I'm just eating tomatoes because I started streaming and then I didn't have time to cook. And now that's my, my lunch is tomatoes, I guess. I'll eat a big dinner. Okay, 1900s are like the most hated subset of the chess world. Because they're good. Like, 1900s could easily win against, like, 2300s. It happens all the time. You see 1900s upset 2300s. But they're not, like, high enough rated. It's, like, the most underrated group. <laughs> yeah, Dina, Dina does tend to, to be... Pretty decisive on the chessboard, which I think is technically a good thing, especially if the 1900s is a kid. That is true. That is true. Your best records against 1900s. Playing up against 1900s and playing down against 1900s. That'd be an interesting uh, statistic. Also, 1900 FIDE versus 1900 USCF is a little bit different. All right, let's look at this position, actually. What is there to do with white? I would be tempted, honestly, as white to play bishop h6. I know you're going to get hit with bishop f8, right? And you don't want to trade this dark square bishop. And it also, actually, you know what? I would want to do that as white because either you're forced to trade this dark square bishop or if you go back, now the bishop gets to go to, I don't know, g7, which is a stronger place for it anyway. Hmm. I'm not sure what the strongest move would be here. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him think, because these are the toughest positions for people, right? Where you're doing a little better. You know you're doing a little better. But you're not sure why, and there isn't any clear attack. It's just small positional reasons. It's easy to overpush.
push for f4. f4 feels a little bit premature because you're not going to get in f5 with this pawn structure. It's pretty hard to get an f5 with this pawn structure. Like, this pawn structure isn't always the strongest because you are weak to knights. Although, there aren't any knights to worry about on the board. But f5, I don't think will work here. Someone said bishop e2 or bishop d2. I'm not sure. I feel like the bishops are really powerful on this diagonal. I don't think I would do that either. Sorry, I know there are two boards right now. I'm just trying to adjust it so we can see the time. There we go, that's good enough. Oh, so we have a move on the board, c3 played. Cool, let's see it. We have c3 on the board. That makes sense, you can re always reroute your bishop whenever you need to. You don't have this b4 break, as someone mentioned. It looks like she was prepared for that, because she has a move on the board, right? What is it? Do you guys see the move that she played, h5? Ooh! Okay, we're getting no castles today. <laughs> I like h5. Okay, we, we still might see a castle. We still might see a castle. It's kicking the queen out. That's interesting. I didn't even look at that. You don't have this bishop sack, right? Because they take the queen. Although the bishop sack, let's say this pawn wasn't here, the bishop sack would be kind of interesting because I, I really think that the king would be not in a good position. In fact, let's say the queen moves back. Do we still have the bishop sack here? That's a little scary. I don't think so, actually. Hmm. It's kind of an interesting line. She. I, I don't think she's going to castle queenside. You don't castle in Reykjavik special rule, is it now? Okay, we see a few moves on the board. Or maybe I'm behind and we don't have any moves on the board. All right, I kind of want to look at this line while we're waiting. I want to look at queen g3. It might be six, because maybe you can get, can't go here. That's, oh, not queen, ah, knight. Because the idea behind this is you don't have any kind of solidifying. You're going to get your knight into this beautiful c4 outpost, which is great. Like this just is a very powerful knight and you don't really have anything like this, b3, because you can always just take this pawn. So that would be kind of nice, but I'm kind of wondering Let's look at this sack. I think the sack is very bad. Queen takes g6. King d7. Your king just escapes here, so you're, there's nothing there. I think that's why knight b6 is super important in this position, because otherwise, I think you might be sack, forced to sack your rook back. Knight b6 is pretty essential in that position. But I don't think that's actually going to happen. That was just for my own curiosity, honestly. 
it's kind of an interesting, interesting couple moves, though. Let's say you did a filler move like this. Would the sack now work? Oh no, because you have bishop h4 right away. That's interesting. And then you can take and you don't have the same kind of threats. The sack does not work at all. Okay, good to know. Good to know. I probably should have calculated that. I took the easy way out. All right, let's go back to where we were. I got distracted. I do like h5 a lot here, though. Open line, sack, sack. Exactly. It's so tough. You know I've been watching too much Blitz when I'm like, sack, 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 sack. <laughs> we see, we see the sweater again. I'm going to eat another tomato while we have this little lull. Chatters really like this uh, queenside castle idea. I, I do not. <laughs> but you know what? I've been wrong before. I've been wrong in the past, so. So, okay, the big threat that Black has here is to reroute their knight into c4. I think maybe keeping your queen here or on one of these squares is probably the best route because that's where your attack lies. I mean, even if there isn't a sack now, there might be in the future. I think Deed is lucky that the rook can't do a fancy little rook lift. Some of the hardest things in chess is defending, defending these kinds of positions, but she's also up on time, as we can now see, as we can now see. The board in chesscom is delayed. Yeah, that's why we're uh, doing it here <laughs> then then we see it right away hello what is up what is up what is up how are you guys doing today i'm surprised my cat hasn't come to visit yet i have a small orange orange demon that lives in my house and likes to sit on things and um, break my computer when I'm streaming. I'm surprised she hasn't tried to cause any chaos yet. Someone suggests knight b6, knight a4. I strongly like knight b6, knight c4, but I'm willing to hear arguments for knight a4 as well. I feel like knight c4, have you ever heard like knights on the rim are dim? I just feel like this is a stronger place for the knight and you never really have to worry about these threats because of this pawn. He moved. Okay, what move do we do we have? Where did that queen go? Queen d1. Queen d1. I don't know how I feel about that move. It feels passive. I mean, are we just allowing knight b6 here for Dina? Hmm. I mean, there is also king safety to worry about. I just don't really see the purpose behind queen d1 here. 
queen c2, a chatter says he wants queen c2 for this kind of sack. Yeah, I mean, we've we've evaluated this sack before, but it is different circumstances because now you don't have bishop g4. So it actually probably would work. So what's the best way to prevent that sack? So the idea that Chatter probably actually pretty smartly pointed out was queen c3, you have this threat, the sack threat, where the queen ends up on g6 checking the king and it's a whole mess. Dina won't want to allow that. But it takes time to execute that plan. I still think you could go knight b6 with the idea that if they sack, now you have king d7 and they're just down a piece. So it might actually not be that big of a threat. Did we get a move? Knight b6 played? Cool. Knight b6? Yeah, because now you have this king d7 move in case in case they're coming there. <laughs> Do we have anything else played? No. You guys look alike. We have gotten that before, actually. We have gotten that. Yeah, knight b6, the knight b6 is strong because as we pointed out, now you have knight c4. If they try to kick your knight, you can pick up this pawn. So you've got this kind of monster knight. If the bishop trades, he no longer has the bishop pair, and you still have this huge, like beautiful pawn structure. And both of your bishops are a little bit immobile. <laughs> so I think that would be a dream scenario for her. But this is really nice. This is some counterplay, but that she's been looking for this whole game. Not look alike, think alike. Yeah, she made the move that I suggested. <laughs> I was busy analyzing on the board, okay? There is really no way to stop that knight c4. I guess you could go... Like, even if you try to defend with something like this terrible move, queen c1, you still... this pawn would still fall if you try to kick the knight out of b3. Oh, there's a move played. What's the move? What's the move? Every time I look away. You can see cats in the background of Alex's stream. Iconic. I know I should be playing this tournament. I know. Can you guys see the move that was played on the board? Queen C2. Okay, wow. Hands up for the chatter who got it. Queen C2. Interesting. That was called from like the get go that that was the plan to go for the sack, but the sack is just really bad now because this king has an escape square. Like now you still you just have knight c4. It's it's hard to think of ways to proceed. As white here. This seems like more of a balanced game, and she's getting her counterplay. She's going to get that knight that really is going to struggle to be kicked. That knight's going to have a really hard time getting out of there. Because this pawn will always be vulnerable. B3 doesn't work, because if you play B3, which I get your idea, it's blocking um, knight c4 this pawn falls, the A pawn, which is the reason this knight c4 is so powerful is because this A pawn is super vulnerable.
She definitely wants to play knight c4. I'll put in my bet here. She's going to play knight c4. Have I ever met the Botezes or Anna Cramling? I have met both. Oh, you recognize me from Insta. That's cool. <laughs> I've been um haunting people's FYPs on Instagram lately. I, I've been told. Sorry about that. Yeah, I still think I liked the queen, his queen better on the king's side. I just felt like there was more damage to be done. And one of the things that was a problem with her position was the fact that all of her pieces were so scrunched here and there was nothing defending her queen, her king. And no real good place to castle either. Oh, moves, moves have been played. Moves have been played. What are the moves? What are the moves? What are the moves? What are the moves? What happened? I know there's been moves on the board. Rook a7. Rook a7? Why? What am I missing here? It's not like a bad move. I'm just trying to see. I think maybe in the future you could double up your rooks. I just don't quite see the logic behind it. I don't like this diagonal, although I don't think they can ever actually open up this diagonal. So that's not a big deal. I'll, I'll probably want to ask her about that. Probably wants to go queen a8 and b4. Queen a8. Well, let's look at that line. b4. If they take, sorry, if they take, you can sack because you've got this tactic, but it just feels like a lot of moves and none of them are forced. Although, at the same time, it is kind of a threat because the pawns are weak. Maybe she could pick up a pawn here. It does feel like this is super powerful and the knight's better on c4. But that that probably actually is her plan, so perks to the chatter for seeing that. She is cooking. Okay, she is cooking. Wild. She will attack on the queen side she's preparing. I think we are going to see that, that queen a8. I think we are going to see that. I think you might be totally right there. I think I might be wrong. I hate to admit it. Actually, I love these halls where you have these beautiful views behind you because it's so distracting. I was playing in Semwe Sitches, which is this beautiful resort town in Spain. I was looking out the window and there was this uh, sunset and I would lose, I swear, I would lose like 10 minutes of my game every day just looking out at the sunset because it was so beautiful. I still like that knight c4 move, but you know, yeah, like she's just staring him down. <laughs> I kind of love that. I love that for her. I would not be scared of a4. Honestly, I'd, I'd probably just... Could you just take the dark square bishop and then they're so weak on the dark squares? That's a really interesting, interesting line though. Still his turn, so let's actually analyze this. Let's say she did knight here. Someone said, be scared of this. I'm wondering if knight takes e3, now they're just super weak on the dark squares. 
Also, you could just take. Yeah, your pawn structure is a little bit. But then you have this b5 move to strengthen your pawn structure at the very end. That's a lot of arrows. I'm sorry. But do you see where my, my head's going? I don't think that's the scariest, the scariest line there is. Let's go back, back in time. This is actually kind of tough for white because there isn't a super clear idea of what to do. There aren't any pawn breaks. It's kind of hard to maneuver anything. It does feel like the queen's a little bit misplaced here. It feels like f5 is something they're going to want to go for eventually, f4, but then you can't go f5 because of this pawn structure right now. So it's tough. It's like, what, what do you even do here as white? I just like this position because it's annoyingly stalled. <laughs> no, this is not either. So what's going to happen here is either someone's going to go for a break, a bad break at some point, and it's going to get wild. These close positions can get so killer. Yeah. The background is a mirror, actually. A chatter says, believe it or not, that's an actual strategy. I forget what GM said that he likes to sit with the sun in his opponent's eyes because it distracts them. That's awful. I just don't think there's any way right now to make F5 work, but it is an interesting thought because it, it does seem like there's not a lot there. You know, you could even kind of try to play in these close positions, like I used to play the close Sicilian, I still do sometimes. You go g3 and you aim for this kind of pawn push, hoping you have enough pieces to do that. So that's kind of an interesting move. g3 eventually aiming for f4. I actually like that. You can even bring your bishop back eventually if you need to, although it's also pretty strong on this diagonal. But that seems like kind of a slow, a slow attack. And it, it can be scary. I'd say the position is actually pretty equal here. In fact, psychologically, it might be in Dina's favor just because white is pressured for those dramatic pawn breaks. Also, if our opponent isn't used to playing these close positions, like for example, what I just said about the close Sicilian is because I'm used to playing close Sicilian, but he played a pretty open line. If he prefers these open positions and doesn't have a lot of experience with these like pawn pushes, it, it would be really hard to know what to do here. F4 is played. I ah, interesting. F4. This is an over push. It's definitely an over push. But I kind of get it, because I might play that too, considering just like, it's hard to find, it's hard to find these moves here. It's hard to find these moves here. But now we have all these files. Now we have all these files. In fact, you've got bishop h4, and you're opening your bishop up a little bit, setting them free, <laughs> setting them loose. What else do you have? Knight c4 still. Oh, I don't know. This is kind of a fun position. He's gonna go g4, f5. I just think that's an overpush right away. I would go g3, f4, and then try to get your pieces back to the king side and push, like in kind of a king's Indian attack structure. Now especially, knight c4 is interesting. It's, I think it's in her benefit to keep the position closed right now. You don't want any breaks. But this knight really desperately wants to go to wants to go to c4. But she might actually... Someone said she wanted to do queen a8. So maybe we could see that. Maybe we could see that. Yeah, Dina is a, a woman grandmaster. So she's a very strong player.
He's not gonna stack on G6. There's no way. Because now you have king... The idea is basically someone's afraid that he's gonna stack here if you take queen takes. But actually now you have king d7, which seems like kind of a weird move, but your king's pretty safe here. In fact, your king can just do a manual castle where it goes to c1, b8, or sorry, c8, b8. And then what? In fact, you just have this gaping hole to attack white's king side. That would, that would be a dream for her. She does have a full set of chess clothes. I don't think f5 is particularly scary. If f5, honestly, I might even just take with the f pawn. Call me crazy, but you get this open file. You don't have to worry about any of these e6 pushes. And there's not really an attack that white has here. Although I'm sure you have to calculate just to be careful this kind of attack, but I don't really see anything that white has particularly here. How long does it take to become a master at chess? So that's the age-old question. For some kids, it takes like two years. <laughs> For most people, it takes a long time. It just depends. Yeah, chess kids, there's a reason a lot of people don't like chess kids. They're tough. Someone asked why Dina's in the corner. <laughs> Maybe she's on timeout. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's probably because you have a special section as a streamer, so it's easier to just set up all your equipment. Yeah, we can try to make the board just a tiny bit bigger. There we go. Someone in chat says chess kids are like gremlins if they get, they'll eat your pieces and your soul. That's dramatic. <laughs> She's under the stairs like Harry Potter, yeah. Why is opponent's name Honey? <laughs> it's his actual name, his last name's Honey, which is just a really cool last name. Yeah, a lot of kids are becoming grandmasters at 14 and 15. It's very scary, I agree. I kind of like the background here. Thank you, Sente, for the command. Queen A8, we have a move. Queen A8, oh my gosh, who was the chatter who suggested that like four moves ago? I think it, was, it might have been the same chatter who suggested Queen C2. Whoever that chatter is, they are in Dina's head today because that was the move, Queen A8. Interesting, okay, so her plan probably is this B4 attack if pawn takes, you take here. That's interesting. It is aggressive. <laughs> nice. Props to you. Called it, okay. Props to you, props to you.
Although, as black, I would be a little hesitant to play b4 because I think one of your advantages right now is this kind of killer pawn structure and the fact that they can't play b3 because a3 is weak. So even though it is kind of a tactical idea, I'm not sure if it's the best one. Although in these, it's actually hard to play down because you really don't want to draw. And since you don't want to draw, sometimes you go for these kind of crazy tactics hoping they work. I think it'd still be fine, but I'm not sure if that's your plan. Although if it is, I'll have been wrong three times and the same chatter will be right three times. Yeah, Dina never wants to draw, but it's hard at this level. Like, 1900s are good. It's it's tough. It's tough to push for the win as black. Yeah, I like knight c4 better. Did we have a move or no? So she just walked away, a chatter says. <laughs> yes, that's how it works generally. Someone chat says, keeping in mind your GM slash dating stream with my mom, what player would playing in Reykjavik Open be a match for Dina, in your opinion? <laughs> I don't even know who's playing in the Reykjavik Open. That's a really funny question from my chat, though. That's a very funny question from my chat. But I, I do not know. I do not know. Do we have a move on the board, or are people just shouting out moves for fun? Uh, if you do exclamation mark OPP, you'll just see all the rating and everything. Andrea won! Awesome! He's really focusing there. This was a Caro opening. Hmm, thank you, James. I'm glad to be commentating. Why is he playing alone? It's because Dina turned invisible naturally. It was a struggle for her to stay visible this long, so she just like put on her invisibility cloak because she's Harry Potter under the staircase and uh, whoosh, disappeared. She am. First rounds are tough. <laughs> yeah, so it's actually normal for you guys who don't know. I know you're probably just making fun, but for those who are newer to chess, it's pretty normal to get up and walk away during your opponent's turn because classical games can last up to five hours. So you just get up, take a walk, stretch your legs. I used to stretch at the board. The only downside is you can get into time pressure later on and be like, oh, why didn't I take that 10 minutes to think? But sometimes it's good. I'm not currently in Los Angeles right now. If I were Dina, I'd stare straight at my opponent the entire time, establish dominance. <laughs> exactly. She was. She was. I've actually never seen someone just like stare down their opponent like Dina does. Time pressure is scary over the board. Like nothing gets your heart rate moving like being low on time over the board. Because there's a feeling like, oh shoot, I should not be low on time. But you know. I think it will be a cold day in hell when Dina learns and wants to play the Sicilian. <laughs> I'm a poker player, a chatter says, I'm looking to replace poker with chess. I wonder if chess can fill the gaps. If you like poker because of the intellectual aspect of it, I think chess is similar. A lot of chess players play poker. I know a lot of poker players play chess. There's a lot of overlap there. Where have you been? I've been taking a little break. I've been focusing on Instagram and um, post-grad life. 
It's actually my birthday soon, guys. Did you know? I'm turning 23 on the 22nd. So in a in a few days. In fact, I wanted to be in Reykjavik because I wanted to celebrate my birthday with Dina. But alas, hats and glasses are in fact allowed. In fact, fun fact, back in the 50s, chess players used to be really concerned, just like very, very concerned that their opponents were hypnotizing them. Like this was a real thing. People thought Tall was hypnotizing his opponent. So they'd actually show up to the game in glasses to stop the hypnosis from working. Happy birthday in advance, thank you. I'm currently 22 and in five days I will be 23. I feel, I don't know. This, it's a, 23 is a strange age to be at because like, you just graduated from college, you're starting your life, you're like, should I have a life and a boyfriend and a friends and all that? <laughs> it's like this very in-between age, I don't know. I'm always down for advice on that one. Considering how bad some of Tall's opponents played, I believe that. It wasn't hypnosis. It wasn't hypnosis, but what it was is people are so afraid of Tall. People were so afraid of Tall that he could do anything. Like, he could sack any piece and people would assume it's good. Do you know 23 by Blink is a song? Hypnosis was a big thing in the Korshnoi Karpov match. That is true. You know your history. You know your history. That was something they were really afraid of. In fact, I think they hired a hypnotist to sit in um, the first row of the match. It, it, it's a huge story. <laughs> Travel while you don't have bills and responsibility. I know, it's so scary though, because I have friends who are my age who are getting married and having kids. I have friends who are my age who have like stable jobs and friends and like are settled down. And I have friends my age who are like traveling around the world. Like everyone's in different stages of life. So it's, it's hard to know where to be. I've been looking into going to law school for a very long time. Before I started chess again, I thought I really wanted to be a lawyer. Um, and it was interesting, like figuring out I was passionate about chess showed me I could be passionate about something other than law and made me kind of consider whether I could really handle the working hours of a lawyer and if I actually wanted to spend that money to become a lawyer. So I'm just taking time to figure it out. Andrea passed, you saw a streamer? Okay, you do win. Who said it first? Who saw her first? I think it was Zybite who saw her first. <laughs> okay, I don't know what your prize is, but you get the prize. Yes, this is the venue in Iceland. Paranoia and chess do seem to be a thing. Or maybe hypnosis was more common in the 50s. I, I don't know. Her opponent is taking a lot of time. You actually see this a lot. The slightly lower rated player takes a lot of time and then ends up blundering under time pressure. What is the state of play? The game's actually pretty even. There are tactics on both sides, but it's not very clear the best follow-up for either player. So it's, it's pretty even. Dina's up on time. I think White's slightly better positionally, but again, it's just so tough. I don't know. That's, that's the best I would give. Chess is harder than law. <laughs> well, that's interesting. You met the artist architect who designed this building. Oh, hey, I see Andrea. <laughs> Someone says they always want to be a wizard. That's, that's a great career. Maybe you can uh, stay under the staircase. Yeah, it's tough. I love the username totally not stockfish me staring at the eval bar. I agree, way slightly better. Like in these positions, like, I don't know. In these positions, actually, I think you could ask 10 players without the eval bar and get maybe f different answers from half of them. It just depends what kind of positions you like to play. So she's a Karo player. She really likes these closed positions. Oh, we have a move, yeah? Work F1? Then I see some interesting questions about chess that I will try to answer. Rook f1. Rook f1 makes sense. 
It seems like a bit of a concession, but the Rook was pretty stupid there on E1. Someone says, what's the best first book to read on chess? There are a lot of different options. It depends. If you're learning the rules on chess, like, it depends on your level. Learning the rules, I would just learn it on chess.com or, like, online or on YouTube. Like, you don't need a book for that. But when it comes to actually just wanting to study chess books, Bobby Fisher teaches chess as a classic. I know Gotham Chess has a good book for beginners. Lots of options. Uh, this was a Caro. Two Knights Caro. Rook F1 preparing the sack. You really think they'll go for the sack? I don't know. I think the sack is not going to happen. I, I would say Hervé is correct in G4 probably will, will come. I don't know. The average duration of these matches depends. It can be an hour and a half, two hours, like um, Andrea's game just ended and hers was maybe like two hours, or it could be, I don't know, five hours. Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully not five hours for anyone's sake, but it could be. Winning Chess by Yasser is a good book to you. So some people think here he's preparing g4. I don't know about that. I think g4 is kind of weakening. The king hasn't castled. The king probably won't castle for a while. The sack on f5 is interesting. Maybe if you take here. But I don't like it. I honestly think it's almost good for, for black to, to have this open file. And this king's actually pretty safe here. Since this position's so closed, it's really hard to push any of these pawns. The king's safer on, I don't know, d7, c7 than anywhere else. If anything, Dina might go for this pawn attack. She's back! Oh, look at her. So cute. I like the shape of the water bottles. <laughs> Are they like Icelandic water bottles? I bet they come with the venue. Someone said corporate lawyers make the big bucks, but the most hours and stress for associates. Yes, that is tough. It is more lucrative than chess. I really like the job stability of law, but yeah, those hours in my 20s when I'm supposed to be kind of figuring out my life is a tough decision. Chess for five hours and no social media. I know. I know. It's crazy. Oh, we have a move. I think Dina moved, no? Can you all give me the move, knight c4? Did we get knight c4? I will trust, I will trust my tatters here. I bet it's cold in Iceland. It's always kind of cold in Iceland. Knight c4, as predicted by me. Heck yeah, heck yeah. Do, 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 do. Ba, 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 ba. Do, 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 do. Rook AE1. Okay, Rook AE1. Rook 
Rick A he won, really. Was was that actually the move? Or are you guys just messing with me? Oh, bishop f2 was played. Okay, okay, okay. That makes more sense. Bishop f2 was played. Gotcha. All right, where do we go from here? We are Dina, which means we're wearing a really cool chest sweater. We have really cool hair, really cool earrings, and we're trying to figure out our next move. So what do we do here? What do we do here? Bishop f2 makes sense. You don't want to trade off that dark squared bishop. You don't want to put that bishop on c1. But where do both players go from here? It almost feels like the queen's misplaced on a8. But it's hard to admit that you made a mistake and move the queen back, so I'm not actually sure what the best move here would be. What would you guys do if you were Dina? Thank you! I've been working on my hair, okay? I just randomly started getting curly hair in my 20s. I had, like, stick straight hair my entire life. Randomly started getting curly hair. And it's been a struggle. It's been a struggle. <laughs> Half the time it looks frizzy, so I appreciate it. Half of my comments on Instagram are like, your hair looks like it's been blown through a tornado. <laughs> I don't think there's any sacks, although it's true that, you know, you have to take time to calculate all the sacks and that can be scary. Oh, did we have a move? Did we have a move? What was our move? I have a feeling the queen moved back, yeah? What happened? She played queen d8 or queen e8. Queen d8. Gotcha. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Hey, look, I'm back in my wife's head again. I'm always in her head. I mean, so you've got some ideas with trading this off. Maybe you could go g3 here. It feels a bit weakening. But is it actually g3 might be a good move. So maybe you don't want to play bishop h4 here. What do you guys think? You could try to break. I don't know. Queen c8 might have been better because eventually you could go for this kind of break. Although you probably don't want to right now because that's weakening. I don't know. It feels like it's difficult to make advances in this kind of position. Although her opponent is low on time, so she has to continue putting on the pressure. Thank you for the care compliments. I appreciate it. Yeah, this is tough. It's sometimes the difference between a 1900 and someone in their 2000s is just time management. Someone on YouTube said, is if it takes some kids two years to become masters, maybe I can become a master in half the time. Usually kids tend to be much better at chess and learning chess than adults. I don't know if it has to do with neural plasticity or if it just has to do with the fact that kids have a bunch of time and money and resources to play all the time. <laughs> but yeah. Hi, Stress. Nice to see you in my chat. Shout out to Stress. No, f5, f5 doesn't work, but let's look at it just to, just to look at it. G takes f5, which is the move suggested before. You have this beautiful pawn structure. The king's safe on e7. You have this open file. This is just like a dream. This is just a dream here. Dina is back. But do. Yeah, and he's under 30 minutes now. He's under 30 minutes. Time multiplies plasticity. I don't think that's how it works. I think you actually lose plasticity in your brain. Kids have the most plasticity. Then you have it till you're 25. And then after 25, you lose a lot. Sorry. <laughs> I wish. I, I know. I wish too. 
Oh, uh, did Anna lose? It's a tough match. She's playing a strong GM. Yeah, I, I don't think it's impossible for an adult to get as good at chess as a kid. I just, a combination of their brains picking stuff up quickly. Although I don't think that's a huge factor because adults can make up for that in experience. Like adults know how to study. A lot of kids don't know how to study. Adults know how to push through bad experiences. A lot of kids don't. Adults have patience. Kids don't. So I think that actually kind of evens out with the neuroplasticity. I think the biggest issue is to get better at chess, frankly, you have to play a lot of over the board tournaments, just like a lot of them. And kids can afford that, adults can't. Do we have A4? We have a move on the board? A4, really? That's interesting. So this was an idea suggested by a chatter a while back. Did Anna's opponent actually play the cow opening against her? That might be the funniest thing I've ever heard of. That is so funny if that's true. Yeah, so the idea is, let's look. I don't know, rook takes or pawn takes, whatever. Probably rook takes here. Rook takes. B takes. They're trying to ruin your pawn structure here. You take back. Queen takes. I think you just have B5, and you still have this really pretty pawn structure. So I don't think that's much of a positional threat. A lot of reasons people get really good at chess, because I saw this comment in chat, young, and then they st like stabilize when they're in their 20s, like professional level chess players. I don't think that's because of plasticity. I think that's just because it's much harder to improve when you're a 2500 GM than when you're a 1200. Like I think 1200 to 1500 is much easier than 1500 to 1700, which is much easier than 1700 to 1900. Like, your rate of returns diminishes drastically. We have a move, yeah. What what move did I miss here? I get into these conversations with chat and we miss moves. <laughs> what did Dina do here? Queen AA? Queen AA? Really? Queen AA? I don't like that. Because, okay. B3, where do you put your knight? Knight B6. Well, okay, let's actually look at that. It, but it just kicks your knight from a good square. Now you don't have... It just feels scrunched. It just feels a little scrunched. Although he's low on time, it's keeping the position closed. That's interesting. Someone starting chess at 30 and becoming a GM would be interesting. I think very few people can ever become a grandmaster starting as an adult. I think there's maybe one example of someone who started at 18 and became a grandmaster. And they were already a either a grandmaster at Chinese chess or another game similar. So I will say that. But people have become masters from an adult stage. Yeah, B3, B3 here is the move. It, it just feels scrunched. Although it's hard to avoid that. Like, I get why she didn't really want to allow this, because it feels like keeping this closed gives your king a really safe spot to go. 
So I get why she didn't want to open it up by taking the eight pawn, but it, it does feel like a bit of a retreat. Usually close positions favor knights, by the way. Fun fact. <laughs> but it only favors knights if the knights have pockets to go into. And if b3 is taken, there's really no good squares for her knight. Yeah, world chess champions tend to be pretty young. With exceptions, though. I wonder what he's thinking about here. <laughs> She needs to like really stare him down now. She's got like that death stare. I do that too, where you just like focus in and your hands are like that and you're just like glaring at your opponent. <laughs> For you guys who don't know, the A pawn can't take because then you have this, which was the whole point of moving queen a8. But I know she saw that b3 was a possibility here. I'm just not sure where she wants to move her knight. Maybe she wants to move her knight, reroute it back, and then go for some sort of break, pawn break. But there isn't really a safe pawn break to, to make. Oh, there was a move made, there was a move made. What happened? Where was the move? Or was there a move made? No, I don't think there was a move made. I got all excited. <laughs> I don't think Dina has any idea what Dina's up to right now, honestly. It is like that in some of these positions. I think we can expect b3 being the next move, though. But okay, let's look at why we didn't want anything like rook takes a4. I think the idea is just keeping this position super closed, her opponent's slow on time, they might go for a desperate break to try to win before they flag. It makes sense psychologically, so I don't know. It does feel like this knight on c4 is super well placed at the moment. Okay, we have a move, where is it? B3? Okay, we had the B3 played. So <laughs> there's two places you can put your knight. You can put your knight on knight a5, or you can put your knight on knight b6. Knight e5, there's really nowhere to go. They're not going to push their b pawn because you get this outpost again. But even knight b6 feels like a bit of a concession because you don't have any sort of breaks you can really do here. At the same time, we might eventually be able to go for this takes a4 break. Takes a4, if takes back, then we're fine. Let's actually look at that line. Let's look at that line. Knight b6. You could go rook fb1. So if you take here, now all of a sudden... You might have some issues, but even do you really? Let's let's look at this line. Let's say we take b takes a4. B takes a4. You could go rook takes a4, because if rook takes, you take. Here. It's kind of a weird line though. If rook takes, knight takes, and I don't think you have any issues here because you can just move up b5 to attack. It's an interesting line. Actually, it might not be that closed off for that long. Knight b6 played. Makes sense. Adds up. Knight b6. I think she's going to want to open it up. I think she's going to want to open it up. Ah, 
Hi guys. What's up? Hi Sangeeta, nice to see you here. I miss you too. Yeah, I think she's just gonna open it up. And actually, I think that will be fine. It's interesting because she's wanted to keep the like, position closed this whole time, but with the knight on b6, you kind of have to open it up a little bit. Y'all predict work fb1 too? Thanks for subbing, Jimster. I appreciate you. Yeah, rook fb1 makes logic rules and sense. Still, the position's going to be open. And you really don't have any trouble with any sort of pin here because of this b5 move, and there's no sort of stack here. Hi, Sunday. Someone on YouTube says there's a lot more men in chess, but good question. There is one woman who was competing with men in the past, Judah Pulgar. There's a lot of women actually who've been competing with men in the past. Uh, they just aren't as well known. Also, there are some women who competed with men in the present. Hu Yifan was in the top 100 of any gender. Um, and a lot of the women's world champions competed against men. It was pretty common. Fun history fact. No, not only Judah won. A lot of people won. How is Dina's hair always so perfect? Is that the question we should ask her? By the way, feel free to brainstorm her questions after. She'll be answering them with me. I appreciate the kind words, Jim. It's very nice of you. All right, we have a few moves on the board. Let's see. Chat, what are what are the moves as per always? We had knight b6. He did not go. I see that he did not go rook fb1. B takes g6 played. No way. Really? Who? How spicy. Really? Whoa! Insane! Okay, it's not a bad sack, but I think Tina's gonna be happy to see this, although she has to calculate here. I mean, look, the king can move. I think they're still safe, although there is kind of issues with these pawns coming in to open it up. But at the same time, I feel like this is just beneficial to Dina. Especially when her opponent's low on time. I, I'd say this is going to help. He's aggressive. He is being aggressive here. He's not a title player. She's thinking. <laughs> Because you do have to, okay, let's actually, let's think too. Dina's thinking, let's think too. Let's calculate this out. Queen takes g6. Queen takes g6, right? I'll even move it on the board, even though this is bad for a calculation. Queen takes. King d7, the safe move. And then you have a few moves, but I think the only real good one is f5 here. And that's tough because you don't want to take here. You don't want to take here because I feel like that's a little bit of a struggle bus. This pawn just feels pretty powerful. I don't know. It's unclear, but you're going to win back a bunch of pawns. You're going to win back a bunch of pawns. You can even take here if you want. You're just going to win back material, but you don't have to take. You don't have to take. Hmm. 
Hmm. This is a very unclear position. Another possibility is queen g8 because you're protecting this take. You're also protecting this take. Here, here. The rook takes back, but then you have to worry about this pawn structure. This pawn structure is actually very scary. This is a passed pawn. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this move. Do you guys like that move? It's a little bit of a tough position. All right, let's go back to what's actually happening because she has to calculate this. So we just got bishop takes g6. We have this insane sack. Hi, Michael. What's up? I've been good. How are you? We're right in this game. We just had this insane sack with bishop takes g6. Bishop takes g6. That is just wild. Yeah, exactly. King d7, f5 is something to worry about. And it's super unclear. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if she's calculating for a while. Luckily, she has time. You take the extra piece rather than that f6 pawn. That f6 pawn's pretty scary if it's left. The time is accurate, yeah. Or as accurate. Actually, the time is probably a little bit inaccurate because it's on a delay, but it's close. He rushed a bit, but it's not a terrible sack. You do get compensation. You do get your pawns. It's just you have to have really accurate play to make up for the sack. You have to know how to take advantage of those pawns because she can force the queen trade like we saw in those lines, which means he needs to be okay with the queen trade and just having those pawns. Seeing the water outside is very relaxing. <laughs> Maybe she doesn't need to relax right now. Knights are everyone's favorite, favorite piece. I didn't think he was going to make that sack too. We've been suggesting that sack for like 20 moves and then explaining why it's bad every single move. It's probably actually not like terrible here. It's just hard. <laughs> it's just tough. Like, it's not terrible, it's just tough. Hmm. Because she doesn't want to take it and then lose. I think it's good that she saved her time here, because this would be something that's super difficult to calculate under time pressure. Let's go back to the position. I'm actually curious about a few lines. So, we take... Queen takes. Kind of gotta go here. F5 is really the only move. And then I like queen g8 here. Queen g8, what, what do you do? Takes, takes. You still have these really powerful pawns, but it, it's just a nice structure. There's no other move but f5. I think f5 is really the only challenging move against this variation, which is definitely what she's calculating. Oh, do we have a move? Do we have a move on the board? Very exciting. Hold on. Takes g6. She's definitely going to choose to take back. B takes a4 played? Really? That's interesting. I didn't even see that move on the board. I didn't even see that move. Actually, that makes sense. I guess you could take here or move your bishop back. But if you move your bishop back... All right, let's, let's say we go back to BD3. Let's say we go back to BD3. We have this open file. It's almost like the bishop did us a favor. That's interesting. That's a really interesting move. <laughs> yeah, that's Zachary. That's the chess nerd at the back. Second streamer spotting of the day. Crazy.
this is the toughest positions, like when you have to defend and come up with a good defense. It's not the, the most tough positions for me. There's a really good Agard book on uh, defense that I've been studying. It's not always super easy. Yeah, actually, I really like her move. I was not even considering it. I was not even considering the fact that you can just ignore that bishop sack and like not do anything. I either thought you have to take the bishop or do something defensive. I really like her move. I really like her move. Bishop d3 played. Awesome. Yes. Hopefully that makes up for not seeing the previous move. Bishop d3. A takes, queen takes. No, A takes, sorry, rook takes first. Can rook take first? Yeah, rook takes first. Does queen take back right away? I think queen could probably take back right away, but could probably also get away with doing a takes b2, b3. I don't think it really matters particularly. This is interesting. This is a tough position. This is a fun position. Look at us. Where'd she go? <laughs> the view is really nice. I think, okay, after calculating that, you do deserve to go on a bit of a stroll. I do have to agree with that. Is pushing the pawn a bad idea? Someone asked. Pushing the pawn. It's interesting, I just don't think it's much of a threat. Because you have this break that I would be a little worried about. I don't really want to allow the c4 break, because now all of a sudden you have these pawns, no good way for your king to castle. You don't really want to open up the center. You don't really want to allow that. At least taking here... You don't allow the rook on this file, right? Takes, takes, there's no... There's no file for it. It's a tough position. It is a tough position. It's kind of tricky. Who's going to pay the bill now? <laughs> yeah, she will play a takes b3. It's, I think it's probably actually the only decent move here. And you can't play queen takes because queen takes a1, so you have to play takes here. So actually, this is an interesting position. Hmm. If you take back... The rook. This could get a little scary. Let's say you take here. Rook takes, right? Knight takes a8. Could the bishop just take here? Yeah. Then you just get kind of an end game, but the knight might actually be pretty beneficial. A lot of people like two bishops in an end game, but look at all these holes. You have this pawn, this b pawn might end up being pretty powerful. You can bring your knight onto d7, move your rook around, or put your rook on this g file. But I'm kind of curious. What I'm struggling with is why taking here is bad. Maybe you want to force that that end game. Oh, because they're gonna double up the rooks. They're gonna double up the rooks. And you're going to have a lot of issues here. You're going to have a lot of issues defending. You don't want to allow this double up. Okay. Thank you. That was for me. So I think our last move here. No, that was our sample. B takes a four. 
And then we had the bishop back to d3. I'll move it back in position. That was interesting. This is a really cool chess game. Winner pays for the bottled water. Yeah, so the pawn, the b-pawn has to take the queen. That's really interesting, because it's not immediately clear why, but if you take the rook back with the queen, you're just immediately losing. So that's that's a pretty interesting subtle position. Then we're going to get kind of an end game. How long is Dina going to use the picture of Gotham chess on her chess.com? Maybe forever? I don't know. Her opponent only has 13 minutes, though. It's technically Dina's turn, but actually I think her opponent's going to be under 10 minutes because we're on delay right now. So I think her opponent is under 10 minutes. Hold on, y'all. I'm going to take a quick break, get a water, and I will be back in like three minutes, two minutes. You're going to see my sweatpants. I'm 100% wearing sweatpants to commentate. I'm back. <laughs> I'm so surprised that he chose to leave the board with 10 minutes on his clock. I mean, maybe he's watching her get up and walk around or like making sure she doesn't get back to the board. He's probably watching because it's so scary. Like imagine he goes to the bathroom and just flags. I don't think he'll take that long. It is hard. It's hard to break, but you have to be really precise. As Dina, she has to be very precise in this position. But I think if she can get this end game up on time, she can win. <laughs> okay, look. Right now, two invisible friends are playing each other. Yeah, it's a very closed position. But it's not going to be closed for long. Hopefully it stays closed for Dina. <laughs> We don't want to allow any of those C pushes that we looked at. But it's really interesting. Yeah, he has to be looking at her because there's no way he's just going to allow his time to, to go down like that. There's no way. It's scary. I would be like glued to the board because you get so much adrenaline when you're under 10 minutes that you just like, you know. But is it almost move 40? Probably not. Actually, you know what? That is a good thing to look at. How close are we to move 40? We are not. We're only on move 24, so he has to make like 16 moves in 12 minutes. Maybe he's really good at blitz. No, they're not allowed to talk. Although, fun fact, people used to get mad at Tall back in the day because he would talk with um, other players uh, during games. 
and he would talk in Russian, so other people couldn't really understand what they're saying if they weren't Russian speakers. But that doesn't exist nowadays. You can't talk at tournaments. I've had people try to talk to me at tournaments, and I feel very bad, like, saying, oh, no, let's not talk. <laughs> but, you know. You're not allowed to have your phone on you. In games, by the way, a lot of times in these big tournaments, they check it, so they have a little wand. It'll, like, wand you through. That's not to say there haven't been instances of people, like, sneaking phones, hiding in the bathroom beforehand or something like that, but it's pretty rare. Yeah, he does get 30 seconds of move. It's still really scary, and it's hard to play on increment, because even if you get 30 seconds of move, you still have to notate, which takes up maybe four seconds if you're messy. <laughs> so it, it's a bit tough. Where are they right now? That's a great question. <laughs> I think Dina's taking a break, walking around, and he's watching Dina to see when she gets back. It is tough. You do have to- she has to be very precise here. Like, she has to calculate a lot. She has to see a lot. And then she's gonna be stuck playing some, like, drawn- like, not drawn, but some, like, long, tough, probably pretty complex endgame. So she might as well get her energy. Maybe she's doing yoga. I strongly suggest yoga at the board. Seems like a weird suggestion, but, you know. There she is. Look at that. We have Dina back. Okay, I bet, guys, I bet you that he's going to come back within seconds. There is no way he wants to waste his time like this. Yeah. Ah! We got it. We got it right. You see, he was just watching her that whole time. There's no way. There's no way. I think she knows she has to do A takes B3 because when she played her previous move, it was to line that up. Did she not read, write down the other move? <laughs> it's kind of interesting. It's getting dark here, by the way. I'll turn on the light soon, but we can get away with just the, the winter night. Trying to concentrate versus downward dog. Okay, when I say do yoga at the board, I don't mean do a downward dog. I don't think that's a good idea. I don't recommend it for the chess players in the audience. I mean, like, like stretch, like stretch your arms, right? Stretch, stretch. It's not bad. It's not a bad idea. I know, it's such a time crunch. That's why he was watching her. Anna lost. Yeah, it's hard to play a GM round one. The fact that he played the cow against her, if the chatter was correct is very good though that will make a very good youtube video yeah. tap would do it it's all would do it i was like tap dance at the board i've never heard of that one but i feel like you'd get complaints i have seen people do some pretty weird behaviors at the board like something kids do a lot is they'll click like they'll click their pens or they'll like tap their tongues or like make noises with their fingers like, a lot of twitches. Tall was very funny. There's a lot of stories of Tall at the board talking with other people. Oh, even once, um, so everyone was playing the Caro against Bobby Fischer one tournament. Uh, so Tall moved his pawn. Like, he moved it as if he was going to play the Caro. And then he stopped for a second and then moved it to a Sicilian position just to troll Bobby Fischer. So Tall did have... A sense of humor. Yeah, I think she's gonna want to do A takes B three, but it's a little, it's a little sus. Hello, hacks. It's nice to see you. What is your, uh, what is your chess news for me today? Kasparov is very intimidating at the board. I would believe it. He's very intimidating. Not at the board too. <laughs> You have a FIDE ID now! Did you get a classical FIDE rating? Is Happy Puppy Pose a real yoga pose? Uh, FIDE Blitz? Hello! You're playing a tournament now, a classical tournament, like a FIDE tournament. So you'll have a FIDE rating in 
four days. That will be amazing. That'll be really fun. This is a good time to play tournaments too, everyone under U2000. So keep in mind. Did you know Bobby Fischer was the only chess player to see Tall in the hospital when he was dying? I actually did know that, and he wasn't dying. I think he actually just had problems with his liver, and it was just a bad medical scare. But he he survived. He was young. There's actually some really cute photos from it where they're like hugging and playing chess, everything. Someone says my FIDE and my chess comm rating is the same. <laughs> there have been many times in my life here where my FIDE rating was higher than my chess comm blitz. So, it's a month long tournament, two games a week. I think you get your FIDE rating after how many games? Maybe like four? Still, that's exciting. I hope it goes well for you and it's a lot of fun. You'll finally get to join the FIDE squad. That's a brilliant story, Jules. Thank you. Thank you very much. Five games for a FIDE rating. Okay, so you'll get your, if it's two games a week, it'll be like about two weeks. A takes B3, work takes A7 played. This is interesting. We evaluated this position and it looks like queen takes A7 would be fine, but you really can't allow this takes takes. So you actually end up having to take here, which I think she'll see it. I think she'll see it. You, you really want that queen trade. You can't allow this queen to exist. And I know that people say two bishops are better in the end game, but you actually have some ideas. You have some ideas. Maybe you can eventually, I don't know, push b5, try to get your knight back into to c3, get that kind of monster octopus knight where it can reach all its tentacles everywhere. It's kind of a weird, gross metaphor, but you know what I'm saying. Okay, I don't think you'll get a zero, a zero score hacks, so I have faith in you, my friend. She's thinking, she's thinking, which is good. <laughs> I love how players pick up pieces, like they're so dainty with it. They just like grasp it like that and I don't know. I find it very relaxing. You're at 1.5 out of three for now. So you've been beating 1600 feet days. That's amazing, congrats. Yeah, it's going to be a really interesting end game. I think the knight will be very beneficial. Uh, my rating is, I'm 1736 Fide, and I played a little chess as a kid, but I've really been playing chess for about a year and seven months now. There's a lot of players playing Reykjavik right now. Some of the comments are kind of funny. Yeah, she's calculating the difference between... Okay, so let's go over this again. <laughs> let's go over it again. The difference between the two moves, b2 takes... b takes c2, and queen takes a7. The issue with queen takes a7 is now you're going to get this structure. Yeah. So that's why she really wants to do b takes... The b pawn should take the queen here, but... She still has to calculate it out. He's low on time. I think in this end game, I, I have hopes. I have hopes. Thank you. Thank you, James, for the compliment. You're getting better, Michael. Are we doing OTB tournaments? Are we doing blitz? What what is our um what's our score here? I think you do OTB, Michael, don't you? Have you been reading books? Everybody, not just Michael. You need to be reading chess books. Seems like a lot of people are getting better. It's really nice actually to see starting the journey. The only person who's not getting better is my cat. The position is about equal. Um, after... So a few things to know about this position is there's one good move for Dina. She has to find it. I think she will. After that, it's equal, but I don't think it's drosh. I think it's going to be kind of hard for him under time pressure to do this kind of endgame. She has experience there, but at the same time, it is possible for him to do a tall draw. 
if she ever pushes, it's possible for him to win. But at the same time, I would probably say my my odds are on Dina. Let's not jinx it, knock on wood. He would take the rook with the queen, no questions asked. It's a trade and you must play it. That's the funny comment. Alexandra Prado is also playing. Alexandra Botez is also playing. No, they're not alone there. That'd be kind of awkward. No, but you're reading books and tactics. That's awesome. I think that does improve a lot. Like just doing a bunch of tactics a day, reading books. You can feel when you're improving. You don't always have to play OTB. Although it is fun and I do recommend it. Thank you for the comment compliment, Lena. That's really nice. I appreciate um, you saying you enjoy the commentary. The cow opening is is uh, Anna's opening. I think it's something like e3, d3, then you bring both your knights out, put them on like e7, d7, something like that. I kind of forget what the actual opening is, but it's kind of like a funny, funny meme opening. What's my name and how am I related to Dina? <laughs> Everyone assumes we're, we're like cousins or something. That would be really cool. Someone says for tactics, Laszlo Polger's book on chess is great. I've heard it's really good. I'm Jules. How do you look so much like her? I think we have similar... Um, Relatives from similar places. I think we're both have a lot of Eastern European in us. Yulia Belenkaya. It's very sweet. Oh, we have moves on the board. Yeah. B takes C2. It's moving quick. B takes C2. Rook takes. Knight takes. All right. All kind of forced. B takes, rook takes, knight takes, b takes, c2. All right, so this is the line that we predicted earlier, and now we get this end game. Now we get this end game. Which, which, like, which side would you guys rather play here? I think I really like the idea, if we have time, of going b5 eventually, maybe not right away. I think we have to do some things first. <laughs> But getting our getting our knight into into c4. Especially if we can get these two pawns. I really like that monster knight. Or actually there's so many good spots to put our knight. The only thing is I just don't want to allow him to destroy our pot structure. Or allow any you have to be really careful about this like f5 push here as well. This I think she's gonna do do well here. Is the board all updated now? Yeah, Dina, Dina knows her end games. She knows her technique. She's good. She found the right moves. You see, I like B5 here too. I like b5 here too, but I don't know why I like it. And I'm a little afraid of f5. Okay, there was a move on the board, yeah? Was it knight c7? Knight c7 played, great. Knight c7 played, okay. We're gonna get our, get our knight somewhere at least. You can even move, you can reroute your knight pretty much anywhere you want. We're not worried about this. Huh. If f5, you just have to get your bishop out in time. And then you're not afraid of them closing it up because there's no vulnerability to this f pawn. The only thing you have to be kind of wary of is you don't want your bishop to get locked in here. This is interesting. 
He's kind of evened out the time a little bit. She still has like plus 20 minutes. You'd play black here. Why? What are they writing on paper? They're notating the game. So they're writing down the game notations. Okay. I'm going to turn on the lights one second. Okay, that's a little bit better. I don't have really strong lights up here, but I originally thought this game was going to take place two o'clock my time because I got the time change different. Uh, the time difference changed, <laughs> but it did not. All right, let's see. Let's catch up. I think his time will really count in the end. Bishop d3 played. Great. Thank you, guys. You all are on it. Bishop d3. Yeah, he really has to move quickly. Preventing knight d5. I mean, Dina has a lot of moves. King d7, then you don't actually ever really have to worry about this push. I'd actually be curious about... I mean, one thing is I'd want to protect this b-pawn, so I kind of like king d7 because you can reroute your, your rook if you need to. In fact... I would like my rook, if I were Dina, to be on this A file. So I am a fan of King D7. What do you guys think? Anamaya just won. Hopefully sending Dina winning vibes. Awesome. Her opponent's rating is 1936. Someone says I used to play Clash of the Clans, it's not really like chess. I don't know if this was a previous conversation or not, but I actually do play Clash of the Clans, and my sister, who I talked about earlier, um, has a clan. And she has never let me join the clan, because apparently I'm too weak for it, and she doesn't want me there. And this year, she finally told me that I could join the clan. She even made an exception for me, and like let me in, even though she's not supposed to. So, keep in mind, she's like 27. <laughs> I'm almost 23, like, <laughs> we're grown adults, and we've been, like, squabbling over this for a really long time. Yeah, Luke Luke lost his advantage, and he's down on time. He can still draw, but it would take a lot of precision. Did I play my sister in chess? Also, Wild Hacks, if you're still here, congrats on getting a FIDE rating soon. I have played my sister in chess. I actually played her recently. I played her and I won, thankfully. But she hasn't played in a long time. I've been trying to get her back into it for a really long time, but she's very busy. H4 is played. What's my favorite troop in Clash of the Clans? I don't know if it counts as a troop, but I like the queen. My archer queen. H4 played, which is probably a better move than my move. But, you know. 
F5, you have to move BG5. Get it out of there. I guess it prevents them from playing H4 and closing it off a little bit. And then maybe even... That's, a, that's actually a good point. Let's look at this move closer. It's probably strong positionally. Because imagine if they closed it off, got their bishop here, they'd be kind of stopping your rook from going anywhere because there's no other way to protect this pawn. So your rook wouldn't be able to maneuver. I actually really like that positionally, h4, keeping your rook flexible. And you always have time to do king d7. So that makes a lot of sense. That That's strong. That's strong. You see, we learn things here. We learn things. h4. Hmm. Well, getting your first FIDE rating, I think you probably want to be playing up in a higher section because then you'll get a higher FIDE rating wild hacks. Jules, were you taught by the Russian school of chess by Dina? No, I've never been taught by Dina. I think we've kind of done chess lessons, i.e. she's yelled at me while I played different moves. <laughs> but I don't think she's actually ever taught me. Yeah, you don't want a lower FIDE rating. Yeah, exactly. So it's probably better to play up. Rook A1 played. Rook A1. All right, now can we go King D7, y'all? Now can we go King D7? King D7. This, this bishop is going to have a hard time maneuvering. I almost think they should have gone for the break. I'm kind of curious if this would have been a decent move. I just don't think you can do the break just yet. I kind of want to look at why. You just can't push. Because then you're opening up all these holes and you get these past pawns and it's just bad. Hmm. These are tough positions. Rook A1 was the strongest move here, though. Who has more than one wife? Dina has more than one wife. Yeah. Rook C1, B5 for sure. And then you're preventing any sort of push. Yeah. I'm not sure about the B5, but... Could be interesting. Yeah, you have knight on D5. Tina's hand is up, hand back down. I love the commentary here. All right, let's see. Well, this is good. You just get the rook on an open file. King d7 makes a lot of sense. Let's say king d7 here. Oh, is that the move on the board? Yeah, I think that is correct. King d7 played, yeah. King d7 played! Heck yeah. Alright, let's say they go here. We have rook b8 defending. Could even go b5 eventually. We don't need to. This is defended. I really like her h4 move. I'm a big fan of that h4 move. So rook a7 is not strategic. Although a move was played. What is the move? Rook a7 was played! Look at us! We're on fire today, chat. We're on fire. We're just getting all of it here. We're just getting all of it. He's, yeah, he's low on time. And it's only move 30, so he still has to make 10 moves in however much time he has. I would estimate probably like 10 minutes. 10 moves, 10 minutes. Fair enough. Name please, honey, honey. Honey, honey, how you thrill me. Uh-huh, honey, honey. Do, 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 do. Sorry, Dina, if you ever look through this VOD. <laughs> All right, I mean, you kind of need to go rook b8. Like, king c8 just feels dumb. 
just kind of have to go work B8. And then, then you can maneuver. I know it's kind of annoying, but they can't move their work either. Tante, thank you so much for the 100 bits for Dina. That was very kind. We're getting all the hype that we can for this game because this is the tough part, right? She's a higher rated opponent, which means she has to push for a win. She's going to want to push for a win. She's not going to want to take a draw here. Although a draw is black against a 1939 is not bad. But I think she's, knowing Dina, she's going to want to push for the win. And it's difficult in positions like these. She does have the time advantage, but yeah. Someone asked, okay, wait, here, a7. Someone asked, why not b5 right away? You could go b5 right away. The only thing is... Hmm. Your knight's pinned, so you can't really do much maneuvering with your knight without moving your king, which is the reason I don't love b5. Because you're going to have to move your king, and I really do like my king on d7. I think maybe just putting this here gives you more leverage for when you push. It just seems like a stronger move, but I don't think you can really go wrong. I like the king on d7, but maybe I'm maybe I'm a little biased towards that. Dina's opponent is Honey. <laughs> Dina's opponent's na last name is Honey. That's his last name, which is a very cool last name. It's a really cool spot. Dina plays for the Israeli Federation. So Dina's opponent is Honey. The king can chase away the rook. I don't think the king needs to. I, I think this rook isn't really doing anything here. I think this rook is kind of stupid and useless here. In my humble opinion. But it's tough because like we said, Dina has to play for the win. Or she will want to play for the win. And in these positions, you have to rely on your opponent making mistakes. So she has to find something tricky. She has to find like a complex position. In fact, sometimes the best move here isn't always the best move for Dina. Because you can play the engine perfectly. If she plays the engine moves perfectly, she might draw. But if you play something that's like the engine doesn't like, but is tricky for her opponent, she could win. Dina has a fortress. <laughs> it's like Strash. I don't know. I don't know. There's life in it yet. But maybe I am a little bit less... Uh less skeptical of these positions than I used to be. I had to get the charger. <laughs> Where did Luke buy the jacket? I'm actually vibing with the jacket too. It's very like California. California chic.
Alexandra has a better position against a 2300 plus opponent. Those girls have been studying. Those women have been studying, I tell you. I would not want to be playing them right now. B5 played? We have B5 played, okay. The chatters are on it today. The chatters are on it. I think the knight's ability to maneuver is important, but I see the appeal behind b5. Eventually you're going to get knight into c4. The rook does not want to stay here forever. Eventually you're going to get it here. Also, the bishops, it's hard to maneuver past this giant freaking pawn cluster. Someone says, chat says, if she's playing chat smooth, that's a, that's a bad sign. <laughs> it could be. But, you know, I don't think b5 is bad. I don't think you can really go wrong in this position. It's kind of a matter of taste. Someone predicts that she's going to go king c8, king b8. I don't think so, but I'm willing to be uh, proven wrong, yeah? Yeah, the white bishops are catatonic. They're, it's very hard to move these bishops. You know, b5 is interesting, because as someone noted, they do not have the c4 break anymore. There's actually not much white can really do here. Like, what do you do as white? It's tough, and he's low on time too, so it's tough. There was a move played though, because he cannot be taking too long. <laughs> well, she's she's paralyzing his pieces. It's really hard for him to find a good move. All right, what did he do? I'm gonna need y'all uh, your eyes. King F1. That makes sense. You want your king to be active. He's strong. An interesting move here is f5, paralyzing the pieces completely. I mean, you'd have to look at this and make sure this isn't anything, but uh, it looks like you'd get that really strong pass pawn and no one wants that. So how does the king, what does the king do? What does white do here? But also what does black do here too? Actually, can white's king even move? Because your rook can go here to g8. It could be drawish. He has to hold the draw under time pressure, but it could be drawish. He's standing up. I know, so brave. So brave. Rook g8? Mm-hmm. We are on it, chat. King can't move away. How do you protect this? You don't want to push here. You can't now. There's no break. The king kind of has to move back and forth. But at the same time, does Dina really want that? F5 is interesting, but again, you're just going to get this kind of blocked off position. Except the bishop will be free to roam. The bishop will be free to roam. I think either he's going to make a mistake under time pressure in the next seven or so minutes, or it's going to be a draw. Bishop e2 played. Okay, trying to protect this so the king can run. I get the logic behind it. You could still push f5 yourself. Try for this break. I don't know if we want to open up the position though, but it's the only way to go for a win really is to open up the position. 
So she has to make some tough choices here. Athena is very good at endgames. She beat a Grandmaster in an endgame in Reykjavik last year. So perhaps we still have that juju. Thank you to everyone saying the moves in chat, though. You guys are so helpful. <laughs> I can't see the position very well from where I'm sitting here. Jules, I've subscribed to your channel on YouTube. Thank you. This is a good game, pretty tense. It's gonna be interesting. I'm curious to see if she pushes. I, I It might not be good for her to push for the win here. I'm curious to see if she pushes though. Because I know Dina wants to push. Dina really wants to push very, very badly. King's Gambit, always good to see you. It's hard to see the board in Iceland all the way from Spain. I have one computer with me right now. Because as you can see, I don't really have my stuff with me at the moment. And we're, we're, we're looking at multiple things. <laughs> hey, I love the name Honey. I think that is a great last name. yeah it's kind of tough she has to make progress uh, my channel on everything is just Jules Gambit it's a fantastic venue this is a very famous venue in, in Iceland it's called Harpa Hall very famous a lot of things have been hosted there I think world championships were hosted there a lot of things were So don't discourage anyone from wearing jackets at tournaments because those playing halls are cold, especially in Iceland. Like when I was in um, Sweden, I had to wear this huge snow jacket. It was the only jacket I had. I was wearing this huge snow jacket every single game, even though it was like 60 degrees. It's it's tough. Those, those playing halls get cold. You're sitting down. It's real. He does look like Jared from Silicon Valley. Wait, that's so real. It's tough to exchange rooks here. She has to think, but she doesn't actually have a lot of time. He's moving pretty quickly because she has the harder task here. She has to find the win. It's not called Iceland for no reason. It's a trap. I told you earlier, Iceland is green and Greenland is ice. So it is, it's called it as a trap. You'd think they'd make the venue warm, but then people would complain. It needs to be, like, frosty enough so people can wear a jacket or not. But, okay, tournaments are notoriously freezing. Like, everywhere, they're freezing. This is this is a real thing. I love playing halls. It's so quiet and intense. And then something happens, like someone falls down or someone, like, coughs. And everyone starts laughing. <laughs> Both Iceland and Greenland are cold. That's true. Greenland's colder, though. Greenland is colder. I am used to California weather. Oh, do we have a move? Rook B8 played. Heck yeah. Okay, we are on fire with these with these guesses today, guys. You think she's going to go for the push? I'm not sure how I feel about that, but it could be good. I mean, it's the only way to make progress. What does white do here, guys? 
What should Mr. Honey do in this position? I think it's tough when you're a litter rated player and you're going for the draw. It's tempting just to shuffle your pieces back and forth a bunch, but you have to stay aggressive, otherwise you could lose. But not too aggressive. Not too aggressive. I mean, there's no way really not to allow this pawn break. This pawn break is mandatory if she wants it. I don't even know if it would be good, though. Because then they have... Do you get the pass pawn? It's tough. It depends. I think most likely I'd go for the pawn break. Would you guys? Bishop h5 is annoying. Bishop h5. Let's look at that. If he's trying to force a draw, let's look at bishop h5. I think you might have something. You have f5. Trying to ruin their pawn structure. If they take, you take here and... I think you're probably doing okay. So maybe it's not the end of the world. The only issue is here is it's kind of hard for him to mess up. Oh, did he move? What did he do? Bishop g4 played. Bishop g4. Okay, that makes sense. I think I think we're gonna see b4. Or c4. That's a really weird move. Could you do the sack? No way. No way that works. No way. Sorry, c5. There's no way that works. I want to look at that line, though. It's a total engine line, and I don't think I would ever play it in a million years. I think I want to look at that. D takes c5. It looks like you're just down a pawn. And then you go for b4. And the idea is you get this kind of like isolated pawn and you get this pass pawn. Actually, you know what? She could see that. I think that gives chances. I think that gives chances. Would you guys go b5, b4 or c5? That's a lot of fun. It's explosive. Yeah, it's interesting. It's definitely interesting. You do c4 and lose immediately. Seems like a really odd move, but, you know. She has to calculate it. I think it gives the best winning chances. You'd go b5. You do get that rook. It is open. Well, the idea is you're sacrificing a pawn for an open file, for destroying their pawn structure. It's kind of brilliant. I don't know. f5 is annoying because he threatens f takes e6 and b takes e6. Why would... I don't think f5 is really that annoying. You just have to move it out. I don't think there's really an issue there. Here, king takes takes. That's interesting, actually. Let's look at that line. Let's say you went f5. You could even go bishop d1, maybe. It feels a little weird. But then do you get trapped? Maybe you have more knight reroutes then. That's actually a really interesting line chat came up with. b4 on the board! b4, well, you kind of have to react to this. You don't have time. <laughs> you you have, to, you have to do something here. I mean, you have to take. <laughs> You have to take. Did he take? C takes b4. Heck yeah. C takes b4. So I assume we're going to take with the rook. Yeah, I assume we're going to take with the rook. The only issue is we're already on move 34, so he's going to get 30 more minutes in 6 moves. 30 more minutes in 6 moves.
we're on it today. This guy's from England. Honey is British. I wonder what she's calculating right now. Because <laughs> it feels like you kind of have to take with the rook, no? Oh, I see her hand. It's hovering. She's hovering. Okay. And she takes. She takes with the rook. Okay, the f5 thing is interesting. She's probably calculating that. f5. Someone mentioned that you do have these threats, right? If you allow f5, let's say you just move your bishop. If they take, um, you take back. Bishop takes. King takes. Rook takes. It's kind of an annoying line. But we also mentioned that perhaps you could even go bishop d7 to prevent that. Also, you have c5 break is really interesting. There's a lot to calculate here. This is not a dry game. He looks young. I think he's 19. That's interesting. Let's look at f5, and then the follow-up being c5. Because, let's say they take here, you take, bishop takes, king takes. At the end of it, maybe you could just... Let's look. Let's have fun here. c5. It feels like your bishop is going to be forced back, but I kind of want to look at this line of takes here, f takes. If you take here, bishop takes here, king takes, you take here, and then you've got here, and you've got this pawn. So in the end, it looks good for her. That's a crazy line, though. Look at this. Who said end games were boring? Okay, there's a lot of moves on the board. I got ahead of myself. Okay, queen takes b4. Did we get f5? What what was the move here? F5 played. Heck yeah. Okay, so the line we were analyzing was good. Did we get c5 yet? You could also technically, I think, do e takes, but I, I think you have a draw. I don't know. I it just feels less comfy. I think c5 is really interesting. 1900s are tough. 1900s are tough. Did someone say she moved? No. <laughs> someone said king d8. I'm like, there's no way she moved king d8. He is young too. Like, usually when we talk about chess kids, we're talking about like 10 year olds. But there are a lot of teenagers who just like don't take chess seriously in their teens and then they get better in their 20s. It's exclamation mark OPP for the opponent's rating. We have a command. Whoa, okay. C5, you have to see that whole line. You have to see that whole line. It's not the hardest line to see. It isn't the hardest line to see. But it is a little bit complicated. Also, okay, so the best move after C5 is F6. After f6, you try to maneuver your bishop out. Here, you lose a pawn, actually, I think, but then you can take the pawn back here, so you're fine. Okay. 
Is this an invite-only tournament? Alex asks on YouTube. No, it is not an invite-only tournament, my friend. It is not. It is an open tournament, as many of these are. Anyone can play. There are different sections. Why not just D take C afterwards? C5 is really interesting. D takes C. It's a pretty complicated line, actually. You're right, that was really smart to go over it. I think the king can't go here, because you have this check and then you have this pass pawn. This pass pawn is going to end up being actually pretty nice. You're going to have to worry about this pass pawn a bunch. There's not a lot of maneuverability here. But this could be a draw. This could totally be a draw, too. I don't know. This looks kind of complex, though. So it's a hard move to find. C5 or BG5? I don't think BG5's the right move, because they do have the tactics. This was like Caro, the Tom dude. Dina doesn't look very flustered to me. Anthony, I'd like to think I'm better at chess, but I'm also almost two years older. He takes... It's a really interesting line. It's a tough line, though. I get why she's thinking about it, but she might get under time pressure, too, although they only have five more minutes. They only have to play this for five more minutes, and then they're fine. It's hard to make progress. Yeah, she wants to find the win, but she also knows if she overpushes, she could lose. I don't think she'll want to take a draw, but she is as black against a 1900. A draw is not the worst thing in the world. She'll still probably play maybe a 1900, 2000 next round. Deep thinking. She's calculating, I tell you, she's calculating C, she's calculating C5. She's calculating it. Someone said Bishop G5, but Bishop G5, you run into this. F takes, F takes, Bishop takes, and this is a tactic here. Ooh, we have moves played, we have moves played on Z board. Okay, what is played, my friends? Rook B1 played. Okay, king e2. Let's see what she's got. And then rook b2, right? King f3. I think she can just chase the king back and forth. I guess this is a way to a draw if she wants it. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Did we have moves or no? We're all up to date? Cool.
Oh, are we getting a draw, do you think? C5 played. Here. Interesting. We're getting that, uh, that title player, title player Riz here. <laughs> and if takes, you would get the pass pawn. C5, pawn takes C5, rook takes F2. You get the rook here. Even better. She's trying it. <laughs> He's thinking, though. He hasn't moved yet, right? That's an interesting trap. He won't fall for it, but he's really low on time, actually. He has under five minutes. That is a really fun trap, though. It would be interesting if the game ended that way. Anything happens under time pressure. But he is thinking. I think he smells it. <laughs> Yeah, I think he sees it. But it's like, what else do you do here? It's still a good move. It's a good trap because even if he doesn't fall for it, it's still a fine move. We are on move number 37, so he can take his time. Okay, so he takes f6, yeah? F takes f6, that's the line, correct? Now you have bishop takes e6, and it's the sacrifice line that we saw, takes here, but then you get the pass pawn. That's super interesting. You have to be a little careful of this. Okay. This is an interesting line. This is a really interesting line. Bishop takes e6, king takes... I'm a little... S okay, yeah, let's just play it out. Here, takes here. Anything... Okay, let's say c4. This feels like the most challenging variation. You have to worry about g3, this break. Yeah, it does look a little drawish. It does look a little drawish here, this line. But he might be hesitant to make that pass pawn. He might be hesitant to make that pass pawn. I don't think we have a move on the board yet there. Jules, do you ever have dreams of chess matches? I, I do all the time. If I'm looking at too much chess, especially if I'm doing commentating or something, I dream of chess matches like 99 percent of the time I like none of the moves are sensical but you know they have not they're three moves away no usually my chess dreams I like ah bishop takes my chess dreams I like have a winning position then I look away and then I lose takes all right of course you have to do king takes you could also do king c6, but that, yeah, that's stupid. <laughs> king takes, takes here, 
Someone said, look at the exchange sack. Maybe you can go here and promote your pawn. That's an interesting line, but let's look at it here, here. C takes D4. Or maybe you meant here first. I don't, I think this just loses on the spot because the king's in time to, to take back the piece, unfortunately. So, yeah. But maybe you meant the exchange spot somewhere else. Takes, do we have moves on the board? I mean, in this position, you don't really need the bishop pair. <laughs> she gave up her pin knight, so, you know. Do we have a move? Did she take? King C6 played, really? I guess she didn't want to give him the easy draw. This is tough though. There's still the tactic, right? You still can't take here because you've got this exchange sack, as smartly pointed out. You probably have to retreat your bishop. And then maybe you can play with the pass pawn. Go for this break. It is complicated. She's keeping it complicated. She's keeping it complicated. He has 30 minutes though, so he has his time. Why not take? If you took the bishop, you would be leaving the knight undefended and the rook could take. It's still drawish, but she wants to push for a win, so she's doing the more complicated move. She is calculating though. My girl's calculating. Ooh, we have moves, we have moves. <gasps> Did he exchange sack? What happened? What happened? What happened? I see moves on the board and I need y'all to, to tell me what they are. Rook sack? Really? King takes c7. Then he goes bishop takes d5, right? King takes c7. Rook takes c7. King takes c7. Bishop takes d d5. Okay. And now he has 30 minutes, and she has 30 minutes too. So they've reached move 40, 41 technically. So they can get up, they can walk around, they can stretch. They can do whatever they need to do. They have time. So he's down the exchange, he has a pass pawn. It's a little tricky. It's kind of interesting. Honey is gutsy. Honey is gutsy. Rook takes F2. I wouldn't do it. Here. It's going to be hard to pick up these pawns. And the king can pick it up, I think, faster than you can. So I think it would put her at a slight disadvantage. She'd be playing for the draw with that. Oopsie daisy. Now we have to play a game of memory. All right, what happened here? <laughs> I think it was takes here. Oh no, did we really go back? I think it was rook check, no? Here, goes here. Mm 
Then Dina went c5, going for the trick. Takes, takes, takes. Look at this memory. c6, interesting move. Rook, here, here, and that's where we're at. Look at that! Go us! Background water view is very nice. I agree. She has to think. I mean, there's not many ways to play for a win. C takes, bishop takes. You could go here, but the king's just going to kind of defend, as kings do. But then can you take the pawn? Eh, no, you can't. Can you? C takes d4, bishop takes. Rook, king e3. King e4. Hmm. I don't know, all the lines look a little bit drawish. The bishop here is pretty powerful here. He's not playing for a win. The exchange stack wasn't to play for a win. All right, we have moves, right? I believe she took. And we're gonna see bishop takes because what else is there? I wonder what he's calculating here in this position. <laughs> Maybe... Yeah, no, I don't know what he's calculating here in this position. I think, okay, maybe when you're in time pressure and you make all these moves under time pressure, the second you can think, you take it to think. <laughs> Which is scary because you don't get a second time control. So you have to be quick, but this does look a little bit drosh. Luke's been playing, play, play, been playing well, so we'll see. Yeah, sometimes I think you just want to take a second to breathe. Really just like check yourself out. <laughs> Rest. Yeah, I don't think it's really hard. People see engines and they're like, oh, an advantage. But it's so tough in these positions. Like, even if engines play it out, if you have a weak engine or like your engine's not set super high, it will usually be a draw. Yes, the opponent's name is Honey. This is true. We've been seeing Mamma Mia periodically here. He really is considering something, isn't he? Instead of like the take back, what could he be considering? It doesn't matter timing wise because they both got 30 minutes so they're gonna let their clock run down and then they get 30 more minutes on top of that good luck on your exam Okay, we have a move. He did it. He took, right? Correct. Correct, Amundo. Played. Yeah, you do have to calculate out rook d2. You have to calculate that out. 
but I think either of these, what do you really do? I think you probably want to go rook e3 so you don't have to run into this. Like, I think it's still a draw, but it's just kind of inconvenient. But everything's kind of defended. But then after check, well, it is, it is complicated because after check here takes... You still have this pawn. You have this pawn, but it's complicated. This is not as simple as it looks, my friends. Okay? It's not as simple as it looks. Okay, we have that on the board, yeah? King e4 played. Rook d2, king e4. Nice. Rook takes g2. You have this pass pawn. As long as you have this pass pawn and you don't lose a bishop or a rook, I think you can draw. At the same time, this is... He needs to hold on to that pawn. He needs to hold on to that pawn. It shouldn't be that hard to hold on to the pawn. <laughs> But it, it can be tough. It can be tough. Bishop e6 played. Yeah? Bishop e6 played. You want to get your bishop onto this square. That is kind of invulnerable. It's, it's really hard to make any progress now. Yeah, once the bishop gets there, it's going to be really tough to make progress. He's strong. He has his technique. Because what do you do? You can't sack. <laughs> That's for sure. It's interesting, though. Could you sack? But no, you cannot. because then the bishop just goes to g1 in time. It would be cool if you could sack, though. Important to calculate it, though. Important to calculate it. I don't really think there's any good way to, to prevent that either. There's no real place to put your king, either. I think I might call a draw. <laughs> Someone said this might be the longest not talking date either, <laughs> ever. Honestly, playing classical chess with a date sounds like the worst date in the world, honestly. Yeah, he's playing well. He's playing well. He's got that end game technique. He's getting up to walk. Okay. And this position is kind of tough because she wants to play for an advantage, but it's hard to. I think this was a very strong move, bishop e6, because once that bishop gets to g4, it's just so tough. Bishop g4 is very strong. Thank you, Amit. Have a nice bedtime. <laughs> Ciao. I don't think Dina offers draws, though. 
<laughs> have you guys ever seen Dina offer a draw? I don't think I've ever seen Dina offer a draw in my life. There is something like giving away your power by offering a draw. Like even if you're in a better position. The only time I'd honestly offer draw is if I'm in a slightly better position, but I don't want to play it out. Other than that, I don't know. Dina doesn't like draws. No one likes draws. But sometimes you have to. I'd say it's a little complicated. I don't think anyone's really on the better end of this position. Oh, he's back! Luke is back! I can't tell who the person in red is staring at them. <laughs> yeah, he, he doesn't want to win here. He just wants to draw. I don't, I think it's hard for white to win here. I think white could lose if white over pushes, but getting that bishop to g4, it, it's tough. There's really no way you can really do anything about it. Luke, I am your GM. <laughs> Luke, I am your grandmaster. I don't know why that made me laugh. It's not even that good. But I thought it was I thought it was funny. Luke's waiting for her to offer a draw. And he doesn't know that she's not going to. <laughs> you see a jewel stream this early in the day. I know, isn't that wild? Who would have thought? This is technically my time zone now, though. Oh, do we have a move on the board? I'm pretty sure we do. What's what's the move? King d8. Hello. King d8. Okay. Well, we're definitely going to get bishop g4 from Luke here. After that, it's kind of tough to make progress. I know it looks like they're like out of time, but I promise they're not out of time to get 30 minutes. King on the back rank. Yeah, she's not going to get back rank mated though. We don't have to worry about it. Someone says they don't like BG4 instead King D5. King D5. It is more aggressive. I don't know if it's good. I'm a little afraid you can just like pin. Can you just pin the pin the piece? Maybe King can scooch over here, but you're not really making progress. I mean, it's it's like most moves here are drawn.
It's on the board. Is it on the board? I'm reading all the chats, guys. I'm reading all the chats. Every single last one of them. King D5. If you play here, they go here. I don't know. There isn't very... There isn't a lot of ways to win this for Dina, but there also aren't a lot of ways to lose this for Dina. Think on the think on the bright side. Think on the bright side. If I were Honey, I would not offer the draw, because I think Dina wouldn't like that, and I think she'd get mad. <laughs> I think they just need to play out whatever draw they're going to get. Neither of them are going to get into the time pressure. As we see, they got their 30 minutes back. I think it'll be fine. He has to be a little careful here. She has to be a little careful here, but I have faith. The only thing is you don't want to allow this pawn. You don't want to allow this pawn to move anywhere. You don't want to allow any shenanigans. It's just there's not many places that the king can actually go. Oh, there's a move on the board? Yeah. Rook D2 played. Rook D2 played. Holds. Holds the draw. They can really do anything. My guess is he's just going to go back and forth for the draw, yeah? King E4 played. Yep. Honey is ready to go home and eat his honey. <laughs> he He's ready to go home. It's been a long five hours. I guess she can keep checking. I mean, she she probably knows this is a draw too. But I guess she's looking. She has time. She can look. Which side would you prefer playing? I like white better because of the past pawn, Aven says. I don't know. I think I'd probably play... It's hard because I think this is just dead equal. I probably play as white here because I think it's easier for black to mess up. But at the same time, it's hard for both people to mess up, if that makes sense. Are you streaming all of the games? Um, no, I'm just streaming a few of them. I'm just streaming the first couple. Yeah, okay. I think we're going to see it. I think we're going to see it. Can't Dina win? Dina can win. It's just every, almost every single move of his is a draw. Like it's very hard to mess up this kind of position. Not saying I couldn't do it. I couldn't mess up the position. I could, but he's playing well. He's doing well. I don't know. I think we call it a, a draw. Thank you, Juan. That's very nice. Okay. I think I think we're going to see it soon.
Oh, how did Alexander do, by the way? I heard that game was kind of interesting, but I haven't checked it out. Oh, she's like totally winning, yeah? Botez. I mean, she's taking so long to think because she's calculating every variation. She's trying to find the win and deciding whether she just wants to go back and forth. As he's happy to. As he is happy to. There are a lot of Alexandras in chess. Have you guys noticed that there's a lot of like repeated names in chess? Like Yvonne is a very popular name in chess. You'll see that a lot. There's a lot of Alexandras and Alex's. There's a lot of Annas too, that's true. Hello, Chanel number five, what's up? She's going for the rook. Oh, did we, did we miss a move? Did we miss a move chat? Rook G2 played. Rook G2. What are we going for here, Dina? He just moved back, yeah? King D5, okay. Okay. All right, let's see what we got. Hit it with your best shot, Dina. Show us, show us what you got. <laughs> are we going to go for the repeat? Are we going to keep going? I mean, she doesn't have a win. But she doesn't have to repeat, technically. Now they're just shuffling. After king d5, where'd she move? Bishop g5 played. Bishop g5 played. Guess you gotta go for it. This is where I think Lou should go bishop g4. But maybe I'm a... Uh... Maybe I'm outnumbered there. They're kind of playing on the water. So it's a hall in Iceland, but it's over the water. Right? So it's not technically like a boat. Well, technically there was only one game today, so... I don't know. You definitely do have a little bit of travel fatigue. It is lovely. Have you been? Is she hoping for some rook d2 bishop e3 stuff? Let's look at that. Rook d2 bishop e3. But no, because the issue is he's just going to shuffle as he's been doing back and forth. So I don't think he'll hang anything like that. It is true that she has more experience. We are getting a Dina interview after the game. So guys in chat, put questions for Dina. Appropriate good questions, okay? But say Q, the little two dots, colon, and then question for Dina. And I will try to pick some to ask her. Bishop e3, check king e3, plate. Bishop e6, king e8.
he could this is actually interesting this gets a little complicated now this is the least drosh position we've seen this in for a while thank you for following my channel master is 1922 thank you bc5 played really okay Bishop c5 played. Interesting. All right. Rook d2. I mean, it still looks kind of drawish, but it's less drawish than it was. No Luke interview. Someone in chat asked, how do you enjoy R Realton Cup compared to the other attorneys? I actually really liked Realton Cup. I thought it was really well done. It was really nice. I met a lot of friends. It was probably one of my worst performances in a tournament. I had two back-to-back -back tournaments. I just didn't play well. But I don't know. I still think I learned a lot. And it was fun. So I think that's the best thing when you can have fun, even if you're performing like crap. I know. Dina does like long games. So technically the sun was shining on her opponent's face, not her face. Oh, do we have the rook move? Do we have rook d2 check? Rook d2 check. I still want to know who the guy in the red t-shirt was. I don't know who that was. Rook d2, king e4 played. King e4. <laughs> and we're shuffling, folks. I mean, you could bring the rook around. But I'm not sure how much good it would do. Someone needs to get the data on whether people who face the sun in a chess game are more likely to lose. I think that would be hard to get a scientific study approved on that, but you never know. You never know. Check back rook a2. I guess you could do anything. <laughs> okay, maybe not rook a2. Maybe not rook a2. Rook e2, king e5 played. Okay, this has got to be a draw of some sorts, yeah? King d5, you mean? King d5, yeah. This has got to be a draw of some sorts. It's like at that party when you don't have any friends around and you're like, what do I do at this party? So you're on your phone and you're like taking your phone and you're like, I don't know, looking for things to do. So you go on your phone, you go on chess.com or whatever you do, Instagram, I don't care. Then you go get a drink of water and then you come back and you're like, what do I do now? So you go to the bathroom and then you like shuffle around a little bit and it's just so awkward and you don't know what to do. That's what this feels like. What was the toughest part in this game? That's good, that's good. I think after E5 probably, or calculating C5 was really interesting. She'd had to do some good calculations here.
You pet the dog. If there's a dog at the party, I would love that. Interesting. Okay. I mean, could you just shuffle your pieces around? Back, forth, threaten to take this pawn. Still shuffling. Okay, wait, we have a bunch of moves. Help, help, help. Bishop d6 played. Yeah. Then I'm guessing, I don't know, rook d2, something like that, yeah? Bd3 played. Interesting. Where? <laughs> Am I missing something? I think I'm behind a move. Dina got the pawn? I need the moves. I need the moves. Bishop d6. Y'all, rook d2 check played after, yeah, rook d2 check, then what? We're getting it blitzed out. King e4, okay, and after that, rook moves to d2, rook was already on d2. King e4 played. Up to date now? Cool! Yay! Oh, and Alex won her game! That's amazing! That's so exciting! Go, Alex! And it was against like a 2300 too. Very nice. Do you think she has any chances? She has chances, but it's very drush. Like, there's... Well, I'm trying to think of how her opponent can mess up. Her opponent can definitely mess up. Probably not easily, though. Dina is a fighter. BG3 played. BG3 played, okay. Bishop G4 was played. BG4. Great. Huh? Was that actually played? No, something's wrong. There's no way. I have my rooks. Was bishop g4 actually played? Okay. Got it. Cool. Thank you. All right. I mean, she could not sack for the rook or for the bishop if she really wanted to draw without offering a draw. And then it's like, you, you can't make any progress here. But <laughs> considering we've lasted this long, I don't think she wants to do that. Okay, we have a move on the board. Yeah. No, we had, we had a move teased. We had a move teased. There actually wasn't a move.
Yeah, but that's only if she wants to draw. She could play on still trying to find the win. Although I think she knows it's kind of hard to win here. She was hoping he messes up because 1900s do mess up. But he is quite strong. Hello, Bauer. Nice to see you. He's played very solidly. He has played very solidly. Jules, are you GM yet? <laughs> Give me a day. She does not need to keep her rook to win. That is not true. Well, she does need to keep her rook to Actually, you're right. I thought you meant to draw, not lose. She does need to keep her rook to win, but I feel like it's going to be really, really tough to win. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's... I don't think you can really march the pawn up, though. I mean, it's a little bit... Like, this pawn is holding together the position, really. And if this bishop... The bishop needs to stay on the diagonal, right? If the bishop leaves the diagonal, then maybe we even get, like, this check. Well, you can't actually check. So, no, you don't have anything. This is all protected. Maybe you could, like, maneuver your... It's just so hard to find a win here. <laughs> If she goes for the sack, then she's just happy with the draw. Yeah. Sometimes my wife is very stubborn, though, and she likes to play it out. <laughs> I mean, it is true that he could mess up. And she's unlikely to mess up. Yeah, so most streamers, if not all of them, ask their opponents if they can stream the game. Usually people are nice about it and say yes, because the it's on DGT anyway, so you're going to see the moves anyway. But I do know there are people who have said no to streamers. Rook A2 played. Thank you. Hey, look, we finally did get the Rook A2. Honey's tired. Honey wants to go home. <laughs> there is actually something interesting. I was looking at here. If they move here, maybe you could do the sack. But the thing is, they will never move there in their entire life. Instead, they'll move here or here. So never mind. It is not interesting. King's F5 was played. Okie dokie, thank you. You do need to be careful, but this... Actually, no, you don't, because, like, where where is this going? Where is this going? It's not going anywhere. They're going to take the bishop. Maybe you can even just pin. I don't know. There's no way to ever get this pawn. Rook a5 played? Rook a4? Rook a4 played. Okay, thank you. Rook a4 played. Gracias.
I mean, he still has to think. Bishop a5. h5 check. Kind of shuffle back and forth. Yeah, it's true. His pieces are kind of disconnected now. I don't really think you want the king here, actually. There's no mate in sight for white. And you could end up pinned. Oh, we have moves! We have moves! We have moves! What are the moves? Bishop e2. Threatening. Bishop e5 check. I do not feel like she's going to hang that. She did open his fortress. That is true. This is the best winning chances she can have. It's just, you know, maybe we can convince her to take up the Sicilian for these, this express purpose. Can both opponents resign at the same time? I don't think both opponents can resign at the same time, no. When the night is young. Rook f4, any good? I mean, she's probably calculating that. Rook f4. I don't love allowing this king into here. It feels a little dangerous. I'm sure it's fine and safe because everything in this position is a draw, but you'd have to be kind of careful. What? Ollie, hello, hello, hello. Yeah, I don't think there's any situation here where Dina loses. Not gonna jinx it. What genre of music do you like? What genre of music do you like? I like sad music. <laughs> and I also like music that sounds like a 13-year-old boy is mad at his mom. Those are my two genres of music. I like Taylor Swift music. I like Taylor Swift music too. You know what? I do too. So emo and screamo, exactly, exactly. Yeah, Eminem, I listen to Eminem. I listen to like, like emo punk. stuff <laughs> at times too mostly when i'm working out but also in general those are genres okay wait we have moves on the board king d8 played king d8 king d8 king e6 played king d6 played Huh? You mean e6? King e6 played. Okay, okay, okay. King e6 played. We have all these moves, y'all. 
It's his move now. What'd she do? She cut him off with her rook by going rook a two. Dina, my love. <laughs> rook a seven, rook a seven, sorry. It's very hard to make any sort of progress here. Bishop's probably just going to reroute back to g4 is my vibe. Did, did that happen? Bishop g4 played. We take the little wins here. We do. Gothic country is a god tier genre. I don't think I've ever heard a gothic country song. Ever. Oh my gosh. Moves, moves, moves. Moves. Rook G7 played. Vibes. That's interesting. It would be cool if the, the sack works. Could you sack? That is quite interesting. Bishop f5. Played. Yeah. Prevent the sack. <laughs> that makes sense. The sack's kind of... I don't even know if the sack works, but it looks nice if it works. I think she did all that maneuvering just for that threat right there. Yeah, Epon pushes with tempo. Do you like folk music? I'm not a huge fan of folk music. This guy does not look like Magnus. <laughs> Do we have any moves? She's still playing. She is still playing. <laughs> there is not Aronian in the back. 40 move rule at some point. No, I think it's like 150 move. <laughs> no, I, I think you might get 40 move, but there's been checks technically, so. Yeah, I think it's the 50 move rule. This is the first round. This is just the first round.
I think the darker it gets, the more you guys are saying that he looks like someone. But I actually don't think he does. <laughs> yeah, it's getting dark there. They have an early game in the morning. That Their game is at 9 a.m. I think it's still 7 in Iceland. I know, once it gets totally dark in the playing hall, then you'll really start saying he looks like somebody else. He looks like evil Tom Holland. Okay, actually, I kind of see that. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty early still in Iceland. Everyone's a nerd in chess. I do like his jacket, though. There was a move played. What was the move, y'all? I know we're getting distracted because he looks like random people in the chat are saying he looks like. King E8, thank you. I'm, I think bishop g4 might lose, but I'm kind of- yeah, bishop g4 loses to rook takes. There's no way he's gonna hang that, though. That'd be really funny if he did. He's nervous. What if he was so close to hanging that and then he doesn't? She's waiting for that. She's waiting for that. He played King F6. Okay. He looks like Prince Harry. Where are you guys getting this? King F6. If Rook F7. Could you go like King G6? And be chillin'? I don't know. Or maybe here. No, you don't want to do that. Too dangerous. He just plays. <laughs> okay, we have to see. We have to see. It's his... Okay, wait, we're all up to date, right? Hello, Hasina, welcome back, my friend. Rook A7 played. Dina, Dina, Dina. My wife is here making me wait. I kind of want her to get the win though. She's she's trying this hard for the win. It's been almost 40 moves. She deserves the win. <laughs> Although Honey's playing very well, you have to say. Oh, did we get a raid? A Botas live raid? Ooh, the suspense is real. I'll probably look up her game as I go to bed tonight. <laughs> Not in a creepy way, just in like a, I'm curious. Both sisters won, right? Hello. Whoa. Okay, wow, that's a huge raid. <laughs> Thank you so much, Botez Live. I heard you guys have amazing games. Hammer was commentating, right? Hammer's cool. Both Alex and Andrea won. Yeah, and Alex won against someone 400 points higher rated, I think, right? Amazing. Hi y'all. I hope you had a lot of fun. My name is Jules, for y'all who don't know. And right now, Dina is really, really trying to make this win happen. It's been like 40 moves and she's making this poor boy wait it out because she really wants this win. It's very Dina of her. But you know what? We support it. We do support it here. Alex played so well. I am going to look at it. I'm going to look at it. It's very exciting. 
In a loss with the cow one, I did hear that Anna got her own opening played against her. I did hear that. Am I Dina's hammer? That's between us. That is awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, y'all. What's the rating difference here? I think it's only like a hundred or so points under her. And I got cowed. It happens to the best of us. I almost lost with someone playing B3. All the lines, or all the games are on the different chess websites if you need to see them. And I couldn't stop smiling. <laughs> okay, that's kind of funny. He probably prepped it too. He probably prepped that cow opening from the very get-go. Oh, we have a move on the board. What is the move on the board? Bishop C5. Bishop C5. All right. She's trying it. <laughs> We've been here for a while. Oh, and by the way, for you guys who are new, you might be saying, why is Dina calling her opponent honey? Isn't that kind of weird? Um, his name's actually Honey. She's not calling him Honey. So, in case you wanted to know. They're really grinding it out, huh? They are. They are. You know, he, he was offering my draw. Oh, my cat said hi. Oh, guys, chat. Raiders, do you want to see my cat? Here, I'll show you her. Her name's Ruth, and she's very cute. This is Ruth. She says hi. She's very sweet. And she likes to knock things off stuff. Big fluff ball. Ah! Oh, she's not very happy with me right now. <laughs> she was mad I showed her off, but she says hi. She's a little tiger. It's very tough to, uh, to cut her nails because she yells at me and scratches me, so I, I just don't. Hi, Joe. Did we have a move on the board, by the way? I got cat hair all over me because she went on top of my head. Cat to G5, what's Ruth's rating? Higher than me. I think we got King E6 played. King E6? Huh? Rook A6. I missed like three moves. Rook F7, King E6. I see. Thank you guys. You rock. If if Dina can pull the, off this miracle, I swear we will be so lucky tonight. If Dina can pull this off, I'm going to like get a lottery card with a lottery number and scratch it. I've actually never had a lottery card. I don't know what you do with it, but whatever there is for luck. Rook G7. Thank you, chat. I need you to tell me because I can't see the board super well. Rook G7. Okay, I swear we've gotten a repeat. No, there has to be a repeat. I'm proud of Dina for playing this out, though. By the way, did you know in Spain, all the proceeds proceeds from um, the lottery go to the blind? Isn't that odd? So Spain actually has such a nice system for the blind because they get all this money from the lottery. Fun fact. Rick moved to B7. Not G7? B7? I'm behind moves now. Or are y'all just messing with me? Rook e7. Oh yeah, we're just going back and forth now. No, she had the option to take a draw like 25,000 times. No, it's just the blind. I think it's rook b7, rook g7, yeah? Someone give me the whole line, my friends, please. Am I up at 2 a.m. to commentate tomorrow? Dina does want me to commentate tomorrow. Should I commentate tomorrow? It's early. <laughs> Bishop d6. 
bishop d6 is lying, yeah? All right, bishop d6, then what? Bring the cat, I can do that. Bishop f4, did I miss a move? Because the bishop just went to d6. Oh, bishop f4. You're gonna have to, yeah, exactly. Someone said you're gonna have to pry this win out of her fingers. <laughs> we see. Today I'm ain't that early. It's it's early. It's early. Bishop f4 played. Okay, we got it. We got it. Yeah, we, we've we've been streaming for a while. I do need another screen. I know, but I'm currently at my mother's house in the beautiful Spain, so I don't have a lot of equipment here. It is 7.56 in Iceland. Honey is a great last name. I was actually telling a friend today, I was like, if I go on a date with someone and they have a bad last name, it's not a deal breaker. It's not a deal breaker, especially if it's like a first date, but I'll keep that in mind. It's like um, a red flag, you know? Barcelona. King F6 played. All right. King F6. Rook G1. She played Rook G1? Okay. A bad last name is something that my future kids would be bullied for having. You know what I mean? Like something that's a little unfortunate. Like too many puns can be made out of it. You know what I mean? Or something that people will misspell a lot too. Well, not, okay, if it's their fault for misspelling, but if it has like a bajillion letters, like I'm from, I'm Polish, like I'm not actually Polish, but my family is. And some of our last names have like a bajillion letters. <laughs> Let's see, Bishop G6. Bishop G6 played. Huh? You mean bishop g3? Oh, bishop g g6 check. Oh, okay, I see. Bishop g6 played, and then did we miss something? King e7. King e7. We have moves on the board. King e7 isn't a real move, unless I'm very behind. Something bad happened here. d7. King d7. Makes more sense. Thank you. You were 1500 last time I saw you, now you're 1900 Blitz. How did you improve? I stopped playing Blitz. That is how I improved at Blitz. D7. Thank you, my friends. I still have like, I have like allergies in my... <laughs> the only way to win a chess is to not play. No, I started playing OTB and it helped. It helped my blitz. Do I do have a fide rating. Bishop sits on f5, d4. Okay, wait, did something happen? No, this is my cat. She just came traveling with me. Both players aren't playing it to the ground. Dina's playing it to the ground. He was he was willing for a draw. He was willing for a draw. We have to admire her for it, though. I mean, it's better to be too resilient than not resilient enough, right? My cat's actually very nice. Uh, my fide is 1,700-something. Bishop f5, check. Bishop f5, check. Great. Okay. 
Where'd the king move? Bishop f5, king c6. King c6. Bishop f5, king c6. He's just going to keep checking. <laughs> Bishop e4 check. I told you. You see lottery. King c6. King was already on c6. No? My fide is not provisional, unfortunately. Bishop e4, check. King. King went. Where where did the king go? Here? B6? It looks like B6. King B6 played! Barcelona is a nice name, like for a last name. Do you think anyone has a last name Barcelona? I just want a name that like rhymes with my name, like preferably. Like Julia Bulia or something like that. I feel like that'd be fun. This is a drawn position, but my friend Dina here, my wifey, is very stubborn. She's very, very stubborn. And she's playing for the win. And who knows? The win can happen. The win could happen. Were you tempted to play in Reykjavik? I wanted to play in Reykjavik, but I could not, unfortunately. Julia Gulia, that would be a great name. Barcelona is cheaper than London, though. It is. It is. They are still going. I would turn this into a drinking game, but I think Dina would get mad at me. Okay. Can you actually legally name your kid Ur? Oh, fun fact! In Iceland, guys, in Iceland, you actually can't name your kid anything. Like, you have like a set list. If the name you pick for your kid's too ridiculous, they'll just say no. Like Iceland will say no. So you have to like pick from like a long list of names. So you can't name your kid like Apple or something, you know? Okay, I feel like there are moves on the board and you guys are just not telling me. Yeah? King f5. King f5 played. Cool. King f5 put played. Bishop goes back to h2. I did see that one. I caught that one. We are on the 68th move. <laughs> to be fair, I've, I've had games that have lasted longer. This is why Dina... This is why, uh... This is why Dina is... The way she is she just does not give up which is good she could win or lose but most likely win but she is gonna go into a time scramble actually that is a little scary my the timer is correct it's there's a delay so it actually could be worse than it looks or better than it looks but we're gonna see a lot of moves really quickly it's gonna be tough to keep up <laughs> after 50 moves with no exchanges you have a draw um, yes. I th I don't know if checks count, though. I am not from Poland. I do have family from Poland. There is always an active volcano in Iceland, that's true, but it's more active than normal now. You have to add son or daughter to your last name in Iceland. Is that true? I did know, like, a lot of sons, and I don't know any, like, last names that had daughter in it, though. It's pawn moves or captures. Interesting. Yeah, but yeah, I think we have a lot of moves <laughs> to go. I don't speak Polish. I do not. When I say like my family's from there, I mean like my grandparents. Daughter is Icelandic for daughter. I, I was like really crazy in 2021 and I thought like I would learn Icelandic for some reason. So I learned a little Icelandic, but I forget it all. We have moves on the board. What are the moves? Show me the moves. Rook f1.
Bishop e7, bishop e7, bishop e7, rook f1. Bishop e7, rook f1. Check. Okay. King e6 next. King e6. So you stop being crazy, um, ask my ex. Yeah, the king's a little bit cut off from the pawn, which is a kind of questionable, but, you know. She's had a draw the whole time. It's been a draw for the last, like, 70 moves. I just don't want her to get super low on time. Air Phoenix says, Jules, I need help. I've had a crush on a girl for a year and a half. I asked her out a week ago and she said no, and now I'm devastated. Have you ever heard of the gym? Not to like work out and look better, but like to like get rid of your anger, you know? I think it's very useful. I see that was misleading. I wasn't calling you ugly. I'm just saying it's it's nice to like, you know, to work it out. Of course I'd be upset if Dina lost. I don't think she'll lose though. Okay, there's a move on the board. <laughs> okay, I'm getting trolled in the chat. I get it. Now tell me the move on the board. Mm -hmm. Rook at four, thank you. Rook f4 is a little bit, you just don't want to let this pawn advance at all, but I think the king's just going to go back and forth. Someone asked me for advice, I say something very insulting. <laughs> it was, I tried. No, Dina's been turning down repetitions this whole time. Literally this whole time. King d5 played. Great, thank you. Y'all rock for that. King d5. Bishop g3. Okay. Bishop g3. Here. Wait, where? King d5. Bishop g3. And... And what? e6? Huh? What? Bishop g3, the bishop moved. This is getting exciting! Okay, bishop g3. Bishop c5 now. This was the last move. Oh, shoot. All good upstate. It's complicated. It's actually, it's pretty complicated. But the idea was, I don't even know what happened here, honestly. Let's look at that. I'm a little afraid to, to look at her moves because he made a move. Bishop c5 on the board. Oh my gosh, he's not even looking for the win. <laughs> Oh my gosh, she's not even looking for the win. Oh, my cat is saying hi again. Oh! 
She doesn't want the draw. Okay, what's the move? What's the move? What's what's the move? What is the move? BC5 played. Okay, that's the last move. All right. She just needs to march her little king back in there, okay? <laughs> King needs to go into the action. King needs to get back into the party. King's been hiding in the bathroom from all their friends and their crush for like 12 hours. King needs to go back. Come on, King. King C7 played. Okay. All right. Come on, Dina. Hopefully that scared her. Oh my gosh. Was there a draw there? No, there was never a draw. The evil was killing us. All right, Dina. Come on, girl. He's playing quickly. He is playing quickly. He's trying to time pressure her. My cat's name is Ruth. She's very cute. Help. Next move. BD6 was the next move. BD6, King D8. BD6, King D8. He wasn't looking for the win. He was looking for the draw. He was looking for the draw. And that shows you. Life lesson for y'all. Dina can be quite stubborn. He doesn't want to move his pawn and reset the 50 move counter. <laughs> he thinks he'll be here all night. <laughs> I don't think he was even looking for the win. I think he just wants to force the draw. It's hard to tell someone to play for a win when they've been playing for a draw. Like, I was defending a lost pawn endgame my last tournament, and I had a win. Like, one move, it was just a really simple win. I would have found it in any tactic, but I was so into, like, the mindset of defending a lost endgame, trying to get a draw, that I didn't even see my win. It's hard. It's tough. It's all psychological. They've been playing for five hours, y'all. Okay, I wasn't trying to insult that poor chatter. I'm sure he's heard of the gym. Is the board wrong? Oh, the board's just catching up, y'all. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I know what the board did. King d8. There we go, right? Or perhaps king d8. I moved- I missed a move after this. This is it? He like smashed the clock. EG6? Oh, Dina. Up to date. Okay, we got it. Jules, I have and I hit the gym. I just get emotional. I understand. It is okay to be emotional. Sad breakup playlists are good. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Getting turned down by your crush. I've had that happen before, for sure. Multiple times. It happens. What do I do? I usually just find another crush pretty quickly. They're replaceable. No one's special. Everyone's replaceable. He's afraid to start moving that pawn because he thinks he'll be here for another five hours. <laughs> Yes, you're replaceable. Everyone's replaceable. Yeah, it's dark outside here, too. I haven't eaten dinner. I've had two things of ham and barico today. That was my dinner. 
You'd be a great dystopic government leader. Thank you. That's actually the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. If you guys were a Hogwarts house, what house would you be? I think I'd be a Slytherin. Oh, do we have a move? The rook is going. The rook is going here. Okay. Rook a4. Pedro says Ravenclaw. Lost hates a Slytherin. Me too. Someone says Hufflepuff. I, I don't know why anyone would admit to being a Hufflepuff. I feel like since this this is like a chess chat, the majority of them are going to be Ravenclaw. Maybe some Slytherins. I know a lot of Slytherin chess players. Your wife is a proud puff. Interesting. Gryffindor, I, I think anyone who says they're Gryffindor is probably insufferable. No offense. I think we're all up to date, no? I think he might have noticed he had a win and is feeling bad now. That does happen. Hufflepuffs are sweet. Yeah, but okay, imagine- Okay, I was- I saw a guy once and he kept calling me sweet and it was nice, but I'm like, A, I'm not really sweet, so it feels like it's like he doesn't know me, and B, like come up with a better compliment, like feisty or I don't know maybe don't call me feisty that's kind of weird I don't know some other compliment bishop c5 bishop c5 is that the move I'm seeing rook f7 bishop c5 people are giving you very different moves bishop c5 rook a7, you mean? Then rook a5. Okay, relatable. Got it. Okay, she can hold the draw. Oh my god, this is actually brilliant. She's forcing him to move e6. She's forcing him to move the pawn. If he doesn't move the pawn, it's bad. Because <laughs> then she can take it here. She's she's forced to move the pawn, so he has to reset the timer. That is so mean. Oh my god, I love it. For you guys who don't know, he's trying to wait out the 50 move rule, which means he can't move a pawn, but he has to. That's so funny. Okay, did he move? Where'd he move? Did he move the pawn? E6 played. Oh, he's gonna be so bad. No, you can't play king c6. You just can't. E6. Okay, E6 played. Oh, he's not gonna be happy. That was that was worth it. That was worth this whole thing for that. He knows he's gonna be here all night. Well, I think feisty is a good compliment, but like, it has to be done right, you know? I know, she is trolling him. Oh, they drew. <laughs> okay, it was all worth it for that one troll moment of Dina's. <sighs> it's tough when you're when you're on when you're on like draw mode. You can't get off of draw mode. Okay, guys, stick around because Dina's gonna come in for <laughs> for vibes. I'm sure she'll have um, a lot of things to say. By the way, if you have questions for Dina, you can let me know what they are. Yeah, I think a draw is black against a 1900 isn't terrible. I think she wanted the win, but yeah. Yeah, when Dina's like, Jules, do you want to commentate my game? I'm like, oh, I can spend a few hours commentating your game. That's totally fine. Yeah. Five hours later. I'm talking about like Hufflepuff and Gryffindor with a Twitch chat. I'm like, I don't know, vibing. There's nothing romantic about like a 78 move draw. <laughs> I 
I know you sent 20 questions, but you think I really remember them? All right. I remember some of them, only the good ones. If they're bad, then I, ah, my cat is being, my cat wants dinner. My cat really wants dinner. She left the camera? Yeah, so she's gonna text me because we text each other. And she's gonna be like, Jules, let's let's interview or whatever. I don't know. She's gonna do something. Yeah, she did a good job of holding that, but she turned down a draw like 12 times there. Your cat heard me say dinner, now your cat wants dinner. I'm sorry. I can't say the word S-T-I-C-K in front of my cat because then she thinks I'm trying to play with her toy and she'll get very hyper. It was a draw. She drew. I don't think she'll be upset she drew because she's playing as black and he's not that lower rated. She'll be annoyed that she drew because she tried to win for like 78 moves. I think she'll be surprised when she hears that she almost lost. But maybe she knew. Maybe she knew. Actually, I hope she didn't, because sometimes it feels like when you realize things in the game is when your opponent realizes things. My cat can't spell, but she can hear. It is a cold walk to the hotel, and Iceland is going to be really cold. I hope she has a jacket. My cat is like two years old now. She's just a baby. I got her in college. She was losing for... Two moves? Three moves? Yeah, but it, it was tough to see, and it wasn't very clear why she was losing and her opponent would have to push a pawn. So, there's that. Your cat's name is Meryl Streep? That is so cute! Wait, that is so cool. I am in Spain, yes. Sloppy piece reset by Honey. <laughs> he wants to go home, he wants to have his dinner. Honey is tired. Honey's been playing a chess game for five hours. Do you blame Honey? I don't blame Honey. He's been trying to hold a draw for five hours. <laughs> Okay, so my cat's name technically is Ruth Bader Katzberg, but I just don't say that because, you know, <laughs> it's kind of nerdy. And a Maya one too, cool. I don't think Luke wants to talk with us anymore. Honey is, it sounds like I'm like talking about like my husband of 25 years. Honey is English. Yeah, I can imagine it's so cold in Iceland, even in summer. Dina, hello! Discord, okay. I have to bring up Discord here. It's loading, y'all. Okay. Hello, Dina. Can you hear me? Okay, wait, hold on. I am going to try to... I have to put you on my speakers and then I have to add Dina to the whole thing. Okay. 
Can you say something now, Dina? Hello, do you hear me? Yes, let me add you to my OBS. Sure. Sorry, no, you Man, must be very I wanna, tired. I'm so mad with myself. Really? Here, hold on. I, I wanted to, uh, like, I, I, I thought sacrifice of the piece was pointless. And uh, I could have taken the piece, but I thought what, what I did was better. And then I blundered that he can take the rook intermediate. For which move are you talking about? Um, when he played bishop takes g6. Yeah, hold on. I'm trying to get the board back up, but I may not be able to. A lot of people say hello, by the way. You got a bow test, right? So you have a lot of viewers right now. Hello, viewers. Not that I want to talk to you, but <laughs> hi. They, yeah, there yeah. was, um, were you trying for the win? Yeah, I was trying for the win, but it was, uh, I lost all my chances for the win ever since I took the pawn on a4. I should have taken the bishop, unless... He has a mating attack, but I don't think there was any mating attack. I think attack. the pawn on a four actually was the right move. Really? Yeah, I'm gonna get it up. Oops, I do not. Whoa, want it. that's surprising. Okay, but it how, how could it be the right move? What if I take the bishop? I think it's it's complicated Blankets. if you take the bishop, but it's pretty equal. That's crazy. Yeah. Also. I, oh god, unbelievable. If that sacrifice works, it's unbelievable. It actually does work here. I'm gonna get the game up. I just can't. I, I'm mad with myself because it seemed like a, such an easy position from the opening. And then he was just burning all the time because he didn't want, know what to do. So I should have just squeezed him. Like not letting him sacrifice anything. And he would just wouldn't know what to do, would burn all his time. It wasn't practical. I yeah. let him sacrifice, and uh, no one really saw the sack though. Like the sack was kind of unexpected. I don't blame you. For oh, that. I mean, no, for me it was expected. For me, I was. Um, yeah. you know, it, it's the only idea that that he has in this position. Like ever yeah. I, before playing h five, I was like, if I play h five, he can always sacrifice. So I should just be careful that it doesn't work. Yeah, b takes a four is the best move. What? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. But where did I do the mistake then? Then he's just better everywhere. Um, you didn't really... Yeah, he was just better everywhere, yeah? I think... Fuck. He wasn't better. He was even in a lot of the game. But there were very few times... But where did he do a mistake? Right, let's look. Um... No, wait, sorry, where did I do the mistake if he was just better all the time? So it was actually kind of tough out of the opening. After e5, is, it gets tough for you. Damn. And so... yeah, and then after that, it's just kind of easy for. So basically, you're saying that my opponent was never worse? No, it, it looks like it was pretty much drawn, or maybe there was a time where he was <gasps> like 0 0.01 worse or something like that, but. It was just like, like even when thing. he played a four, I completely forgot to calculate uh, capture on a four. But I think I cannot win anything because he will take the knight on c four and then take the pawn back. Yeah, when he played a four, you were correct. Like queen, queen, your move was fine, but like there's no move where you would have been better. <gasps> oh God. I don't know if I should feel good or bad. I actually, I probably should feel good because all the game I was cursing myself. But actually, if I didn't have anything that I, but it's probably not as painful. Yeah, it's he played really solid. He played really well. I I don't know how you got the opening. <laughs> the position you did was kind of rough out of the opening, but like it was pretty even. And you just didn't have many chances. I think it was easier on your opponent than you. That's interesting because for me, obviously, when the game, like when he played, I wanted him to play e5. I wanted to close the position so that I can do all my maneuvering, you know? It's like this is kind of, I, I like this chess. Like it's like improved range because I don't have a bad bishop. And when he'd let me 
take bring my net on b5 and take with a pawn i thought like i was already like you know easy win but then like she just has this sack idea like the, in this case it means that i should try to just not let him sack like maybe put the rook on g8 block like pr like protect the g6 and then like do some put the knight on c4 i don't know so like, it, it sounds like it smells like I, I just like there was somewhere prophylactics that i didn't do precisely but you know better because you had the engine yeah it's it was tough i think maybe you could have prevented i'm looking um so there was a move advantage instead anywhere, of queen a8 queen a8 um allowing b3 it, was kind of hard that was probably the only yeah, thing queen... You mean after he played a4? Yeah. But if I don't do queen a8, then he wants to take. You can... It says well, technically best engine move, rook takes a4. Rook takes but a4. But that, that's the thing. It simplifies Yeah, rook though. takes... Pawn takes, and then he has to play bishop c4. Yeah, so rook takes... Bishop c4, rook takes, right? Pawn takes, bishop c4, yeah. D takes c4. Um, queen takes b5. I mean, you're still doing fine, but I get why you did what you did. Like, it's not, like I said, there's nothing that was really, like, great or terrible for you there. I don't really think you really blundered at any point, except for chat. <laughs> um, there was one point in the end game that you blundered when you're under time trouble. Did you notice? Chat wants to know. Wait, where? Where? It was... I didn't know. It was, he didn't notice too, luckily. <laughs> it was um when you went bishop g3 at the very end on move 71. It allows e6. I don't think he wanted to move that because he didn't want to like start the 50 move stuff again. But with e6, he's just like one. Oh, what, where, where is my rook? I don't remember the position. So your rook is on f4. Yeah. And you move your bishop from h2 to g3. Okay, and if you place e6 and I just go rook f1. Or rook f1 rook uh, takes e4. Bishop no, c5 there. check and then he can promote, I think. Oh, let me... Okay, wait a second. I'm gonna... Because it's really hard for your... Uh... Ooh. You can block everything. Wow. Uh. Yeah, the chat's saying the computer got excited. Yeah, but he was moving quickly, so he didn't see it. Damn. So I'm lost there, right? Yeah. Because he can. Okay. Promote. Well, that means that I got lucky. But it was a that I, you were drawing like for like be happy. forty-five I moves. Be happy after this game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you were drawing for like the majority of the game, but I think it was just tough. It was just a game without a lot of chances. Just kind of, yeah. Uh well, okay, okay. That that makes me feel better about myself. As you should, as you should, and you did fight really hard. Can you maybe one last time go back to that sacrifice if he takes on g6 yep. and then I take the bishop, he goes queen takes, I go king d7. Wait, let me get back and to the And he position. goes, I didn't like, yeah, I didn't like a5. Yeah, so let's look at, um, you're looking at after he takes, right? Here? Right? Yeah, damn, internet here sucks. Um. Yeah, it's good of you to see that you can't really take the bishop. You might get away with it, but it's just a little tricky and you're going to lose a bunch of pawns and it's uncomfortable. So I think you played this really well. Welcome back. Hello. My dear, where are you? Can you hear me? Yeah. All right, do you see it? Uh, so he took on g6, right? 
Yeah, he takes on g6. I go king d7 and he goes a5. King d7. King d7 or g7? Yeah. King d7. You're hanging f7, no? No, 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 no. I take the bishop. Oh, you take the bishop first. Okay, he takes here. You go queen, king d7 here now. Uh, yeah, f5. So is, is it f5? Mm -hmm. f5. He takes f5. You, will, you probably wouldn't do Wait, that. wait, wait. But, uh, but here I have queen g8. Yeah, you do have queen g8, which we were analyzing during the game. And I he thought takes, that was great. Takes um, f6, and there's enough compensation <gasps> to draw. Really? Be a little better, yeah. Because after f6, like, you have to worry about that wow. pawn. Yeah, I, I'm surprised if you saw all that, but it was pretty good. No, you know, it, it, that's not the reason why I didn't go here. The reason I didn't go for this variation is be, instead of f5, a5. Really? Okay. Instead of f5. Yeah. All right, let's go back. Instead of f5, you're afraid of a5. Yeah. Interesting. Um. Well, the pawn can't take your knight for a few moves. <laughs> At least it says rook f8 is the best move here. What? I guess oh, to prevent f5. Rook f8. Yeah. And on f5, we can take with the pawn. Yeah. Or rook takes f5, actually. You want to take rook, rook takes f5. That's interesting. It's tricky. Rook takes uh, f5. What's the evaluation there? In this position, it's negative 0.89. Oh, so here black is better. Slightly. Hmm. Okay. Well, it was complicated. How how yeah. did man, you must be tired. I I really wanted like to, to have a big fast win for you so that you could go and get some rest, but I <laughs> failed. It's okay. We we were having fun here. We were having fun with chat. It was a lot of fun. Were you? Yeah, we are. Chat, are we having fun? I think we're having fun. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna look quickly. Um, I, I don't know if my camera removes when I look at chat. Uh, you're but... fine. I I just had the board up instead of your camera because I could only have one at a time. I had your camera up first. Oh, think. nice. Yeah. Uh, how are you doing, uh, everybody? Did oh my god, there is an arbiter. What is what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> He's vibing. <laughs> Wait, all this time you didn't have my camera? No, Why I had your I... camera. Oh, Hello. you mean when you're talking on Discord? Yeah. When you had me start analyzing, I didn't have your camera, but before I did. <laughs> oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> um, right, guys, thank you so much for rooting for me. It means the world. Thank you for bearing with Jules. She is the best. Um, <laughs> Kramnik, yeah, I didn't... Uh, I don't know if I satisfied Kramnik's needs or not today, but man, that that sounds bad. <laughs> um, I'm not going to comment okay. on that. <laughs> How is the YouTube chat? The YouTube chat was very lively. A bunch of people are saying hmm. hi on YouTube. Uh... I think it worked quite well. We had all the chats going. It was all very good. Nice. Well, right. I don't know what 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 we have for tomorrow yet. I don't know what we have as a host. We will we will figure it out. We'll figure it out. I'll talk to you. Okay, we'll talk behind the scenes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's okay, like the I'm gonna try. Person. I'm gonna try to move uh, my table closer to the playing hole because this place well, first of all i can't see the playing hole and secondly it's so cold but you guys say that girls were cold as well yeah it like it looked cold there but yeah you should rest rest up study for your game okay thank you well jules you are the best chat you are the best and um i uh well what can i see first round is always tough because um you gotta wake up 
But now that you're woken up, you're gonna rock and roll. You got this tomorrow. It's gonna be good. You'll have white. It'll be better. You'll have dinner. Okay. <laughs> Let me know who you would like to raid. Oh, yeah. Well, I think you can choose yourself. Oh. Definitely. I trust you. You're a mod as well, so I trust you on this. Am I allowed to raid from your channel? Is that how it works? Well, you I mean, um, if you're a mod, um, maybe not necessarily, actually. Let me, um, well, I mean, who do you, wait, let me see. I don't know who's there. Bigfoot. Oh, he's, he's here. We can raid Bigfoot. Oh, there's still one game going. Yeah, there is. We can raid Bigfoot. Bigfoot? Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, Bigfoot is good. Let me read. All right, yeah. Thank okay, you guys. That's... Who are these people? Okay. Ah. Oh, they're watching me. <laughs> <laughs> All nice. Right. Sounds good. I got us all arbiters here. It's a perfect moment to ask them to move my table. <laughs> Great. All right, Dina. And okay, everybody, thank you so much. You guys rock. We'll get them. Thank you, guys. All right. See you. Talk to you later. Bye. I'll, I'll wait for your raid before I end stream, right? I think she left me. I think she left me. Bye, y'all. I will see you. We're going to be commentating more of Dina's games. It'll be a lot of fun. I'm just going to make sure. That she has rated, and then I will turn off stream. Awesome. Okay, we'll wait for the raid to finish and then we'll turn off stream. It'll be a lot of fun. Thank you guys for joining. You rock.